Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 2024 Pokemon Let's Go Any Percent NMS Tournament. My name is Trevaria, and I will be on commentary for you today. And joining me in this all-European commentary booth are Sheepia and Furist. How are you doing? Hello, I'm, I'm doing really good. Uh, how, how's your day going, Triff? Oh, I've, I've had a pleasant day, thank you. Yeah, um, Furious, anything? Uh, I'm, I'm Furious busy with tech, so he's probably not really going to do some answering now, but we'll talk to Hello. him later. That'll be my answer. Uh, all right, well, uh, let's take a look at our competitors for today's race before we get going here. Uh, and it's a very special race, let's just say that, because coming coming in from pot two, it's uh, Taka Lorette with uh, three or four PB currently. Uh, certainly going to be in the driver's seat for this race. And then, of course, his opponent from pot three is uh, Diego Lazar 4, producer of the Spanish language restream of this tournament. Shout out. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he picked up the run for this tournament and has already shown tremendous improvements. So I'm excited to see what he can do today. And oh, also, J Towels is here. Um, yeah, not supposed to be in this race, but uh, was originally drawn into the other two way race that we had scheduled. Sadly, his opponent had to drop out of the tournament. So uh, now he's just going to be doing some parallel racing here next to the other two. Not in direct competition, but very much needs to have a time on the books for this format to work out. Yeah, the, the reason for that is uh, the amount of points that JT can win is dependent on like the time that he gets. So he still needs to get a time on the board to, well, so, so we know how many points he actually gets. Yeah, I'm sure we, we're going to go into more detail on that a little bit later. You know, it's a three hour run. Yeah, there's like this this dead spot like 35 minutes in that's perfect for this sort of fun. Uh... You'll know the spot if you have never seen a Let's Go run. Uh, so yeah, we're off here with the opening cutscene involving Professor Orgard here. Everyone's gonna choose their character. Let's see. Okay, we have two girl ones already. And a boy one. Okay, well, better than yesterday's uh, EU friendly race. Where we had three boys. Hey, I picked boy too. Yeah, that was a, a little different. <laughs> Don't you always pick boy too? Yes. Good to be consistent in that sort of things, I think. And it's like I'm getting some gray hairs. Boy two has gr gray hairs. It's boy it's one fitting. all the way. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be blonde hair too. I know, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> but what we can also see in this uh, beginning bit is uh, what version the the runners are are are, are going to play today. So we have uh, Tuklaret and JT on EV version, and Diego playing Pikachu. It's just, there's going to be a couple of differences between all three runners, just based on the version. Also, don't be distracted by the 7 out of 50 on Taka's tracker. Uh, I'm sure that's going to get resolved uh, when we get... At the latest, when we get to the point where Tucker actually has seven Pokemon caught. Okay. Tucker's or probably like... going to get to Forest and realize... Oh wait, I have yeah. seven. <laughs> or, or or this is just like, he's guaranteeing these seven already. Like, man this is what I'm having at the Brock split, so... Some people mark the gifts early. Oh, okay. But you're not going to get six gifts. <laughs> that would be... A lot of gifts for sure. Uh, no, he just has the bugs and the buzzbot, so the forest catch is already marked. Uh, anyway, our runners yeah. are about to catch their starters here. Uh, nothing really to see for EV version, of course. For Pika version, we can just quickly look at the CP value, the I believe it's combat points. 
keep forgetting what it stands for. Uh, in the upper right corner, it's only visible for a second. We see 26 here for Pikachu. Neutral nature Pikachus have 27 CP, so you'd know right away if you got a neutral nature Pikachu. This one isn't. Eevee doesn't have that luxury, it's always going to be 27 CP. So the runners will either have to check their nature in the lab as soon as they get their EV properly, or they're just going to have to go go on faith and then they'll get to see their stats on their first level up, which is going to happen on the third fight of the run. Yeah, I think that Turker and JT will just run with whatever they get. But we'll see. We're, we're about to find out here after the nicknaming screen. Of course, since this is a speedrun, we don't want to name our Pokemon. Because that takes time. Yeah, yeah, and, and just to be clear to everyone, the, the real race that is happening is the left side of your screen. Turker versus Diego. And JT is just like a bonus. If he does check, gets quiet here. Keep forgetting what that is, that plus special defense. What's that it's plus, plus special attack, minus attack. Uh, speed. Well, minus speed isn't great for EV, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can compensate with high experience. So uh, he's just going to have to get a couple of pink things to spawn in Mount Moon. But yeah, speaking of the catcher sets, of course, the thing that makes the speedrun stand out from most other Pokemon speedruns. Maybe with the exception of uh, Legends Arceus. Because we do need to catch a lot of things, since on the one hand, uh, they shifted the weight of the experience from battles to catches in this game, because it's sort of a Pokemon Go adjacent game. And on the other hand, because of course there is a 50 Dex res registration requirement to be able to enter Koga's gym. So you gotta get that magical 50 number uh, registered in your Pokedex until you get there. Just what makes this run so interesting. Yeah, there's just so many like little details in swapping things over, like. Um... Just like, what, what Pokemon are you planning? What, what what shows up? What doesn't? Do you wait for things? Or do you, like, can you wait for things? Or do you really need, like, can you keep running? It's There's, like, a lot of micro decisions in that way. Not not as much in, like, oh, what move will I use in a battle? That's all pretty much set in the most part. But just, like, the small differences in... Uh, sometimes even, like, in what order do you catch certain things? Yeah, the on-the-fly routing and rerouting that you have to do based on which Pokémon spawn for you is what makes this game, uh, or the speedrun, different every time, basically. So it's always interesting to see what our runners end up with. Everyone's on the first fight right now against the rival Trace in the lab. Eevee usually, I think, three shots this? Yeah, only with plus attack or crits can you two shot it. And yeah, it's actually, you can even yeah. four shot it if it's like, just like growling. Hmm. Then your life is miserable. Yeah, of course, the growl. Pikachu doesn't have to worry about that since it's attacking with Thundershock, which is a special move, so it does not get affected by a growl. But on the other hand, uh, just based off of the power of Thundershock and Pikachu special attack, it's basically always going to four shot unless you're plus special attack. By the way, I yeah. didn't I didn't pay attention to whether Diego checked 
his nature in the lab. Nope. Did not, okay. Then we're yeah, gonna so. find out one fight earlier than with the EVs on the Radata fight here on Rat 1. Yeah, just like proof of EV superiority, it gives one more experience in the rifle fight. Okay, I, I, I see how it is. Not even 10 <laughs> minutes into the run and I already have to... <laughs> Have to well, I mean, we don't in. have to talk about it again. We have some 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 time <laughs> later for these sort of topics. I mean, look at it. It's like neck and neck this this race. Anything can happen. I mean, yeah. Before the first spawns come in, truly anything can happen. We could see, I don't know, another level twenty starter before Misty. Or will we see like a level thirteen for Brock in the EV versions? That would be fun. That never happens. Alrighty. Tucker and GT are approaching the forest. Let's see if we can get an early bug spawn here. Not for JT and also not for Tucker. So usually you want to wait with your catches until you entered the forest and picked up the lure. Uh, but there is a kind of specific mechanic where you get a boost to your catch rate before you enter the forest. So that means that catches you do before forest are much easier, um, which actually makes catching an unlured bug before forest a decent strat, even though it's going to have to get some extra levels to evolve when compared to a lured bug that you catch in forest. Also not as much experience. That as well, yes, but that usually doesn't hurt too much because the 1c catch that you have to do is always going to just yield less experience. And that is true, yeah. So I think that the difference ends up being like 30, 40 experience between like a, an unlured level 4 caterpie that you catch for the forest and the lure at level 7 category that you catch in the forest. So, so I, I didn't catch what like, nature Diego has, but Tucker has a minus special attack nature. That's rough. So that won't really hurt much in the, the early game, but in the middle game that will uh, not be fun. Yeah, but Tucker has some chance to overlevel, or at least a bigger chance, I guess. Which can definitely help him uh, in the middle game, in the mid game. It's usually a lot harder if you have minus attack, for example, because oh, it affects you attack? immediately. Oh no, the it's sand attack misses! Sand attack. Oh no. <laughs> See, Pika doesn't have to worry about this. <laughs> uh, Eevee doesn't have to worry about it. If you catch a Pika oh, before. God. Yeah, it's a skill issue. Oh god, he's just not hitting at okay. all. Oh, there we oh. go. Only took six turns or whatever. <laughs> This can be very tilting, and yeah, you don't want that in the beginning of the race, so... Yeah. I do hope Turkar just... Like... Oh, resets. skips the Frick? Skips the Frick? I respect it. That won't be, uh, won't be popular in chat? It won't be popular in chat, but I respect it. It's also not popular with me. I had Bulbasaur picked out as my... Favorite Pokemon last year uh, for the tournament player profiles for a reason. To be fair, Pika is not that much better here. <laughs> and so this is the first, uh, but very important catching section of the run. Uh, as Triff said in the intro, for like the beginning of, we, we, we do need to get to 50 catches in total. Um, but another important thing is, battles really don't give a lot of EXP. Like fighting trainers, it's like very low a, uh, EXP. So, uh, but catches on the other hand have like a very boosted amount of EXP. Um, so that's where you get most of your levels that you actually need to get, like, to advance. 
So these these catches in the forest, um, they 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 well they they start you on your way for the EV versions. You need to hit level ten. Um, I mean, for for Pikachu, you also don't want to be like level seven leaving here, but no, <laughs> it's a bit less important. Like level nine is okay. Well, level nine would be still be worrying. Just oh, there's another Frick. Tech attacker gets another chance. This one's glowing too. Not punished. Redemption arc. Here we go. Uses the Raspberry 2 to make this catch a little easier. Ah, gets trolled by the attack. That's classic yeah. starter behavior. Misses the circle on the throw. So this is going to be rough. Meanwhile, JT is uh, oh, relating for wow. Bellsprout. Yeah, these starters are not easy to catch. Oh, oh it's about to run away. Oh, okay, okay. It's excellent. Okay. This should get in. Yeah. So the way we can away. tell that uh, the Pokemon was about to run away there is that it, it attacked without the circle disappearing. Usually when wild Pokemon attack, the circle that you need to hit to catch it disappears for the duration of the attack. But if they attack through the circle, basically, then that means that they're about to run away. This usually doesn't happen after one breakout. No, that was very so That quick. would have been quite unlucky. We uh, see... Uh... JT in chat saying he's low on XP. He caught uh, the Bell Sprout on Route 2 after resetting the route once, but his EV is still not level 10, and you really need level 10 for EV to get double kick. Yeah. So he's just going to catch something there, hopefully, like a Radata, I guess the best option. Mm. Maybe a Pidgey. Depending on how bad your XP is here, it might be actually worth it to try at least once to get like a glowing Radata since you know glowing Pokemon He's have like that level 9 at, yeah. at like 40% oh yeah maybe maybe a glowing Radata would be worth it to fish for let's see what he gets here Mm, just gonna go for the regular Pidgey. I don't think that's gonna do it. The good thing about Pidgey is that it doesn't attack ever. It only hops. So you can basically always YOLO throw it and hit it quite it, quickly. So it's a fast catch at least. It can hop for a very long time. It can hop for a long time. Yeah, okay, that was enough. Underestimated the amount of experience that Pidgey gives again. <laughs> Yeah, especially here, it's like a level 9 that does make a difference. Yeah, for sure. Elbow. Meanwhile, Diego is the first one to actually enter the next town. Again, on a very lean 5 catches here. Feminine computer. Yeah, just... Low on the EXP. Yeah. Yeah, only has the Weedle evolved, and uh, outside of that, just bare minimum catches only Oddish, Caterpie, and Kakuna on top of the Pikachu right now. Pikachu generally does have a faster start here. It's usually quicker to get to Brock, and also get done with Brock, because Oddish is usually just better. Yeah, that's the blessing of the version exclusive right there, since Oddish is a special attacker, or at least has good special attacking moves here with Absorb, uh, and to a lesser extent Acid. Um, it makes quick work of the gym, which is something that the version exclusive Bellsprout on EV version really can't do with its physical Vine Web. So EV runners have to rely on EV's double kick, which EV specifically learns to be able to deal with Brock, but 
as you can see, and now on, on JT's screen here, it takes two turns to get through the Geodude alone, and then another three to get through the Onyx, while Oddish ideally only takes two turns. Ooh, almost Ooh. dies here for Diego. Yeah, I think the uh, Diego got a flinch first. Yeah, that is the, the one thing that can go wrong in uh, the Pika fight. Because Oddish is slower than Onyx, and Onyx knows head, knows head but it can potentially flinch lock you into just dying there. Well, well JT's minus speed, Eevee yeah. is also slower than Onyx. Oh. Which could be scary if Onyx started using headbutt. Yeah, I could also just go for uh, Rock Throw, which is what you want to see if you're slower than that. Because that can flinch. It's just damage. Takuna also coming into Brock. And let's look at what the first drops will be for these runners. Uh, Diego is still a Pretty new runner. Uh, I watched this yeah. run earlier uh, today. He did an attempt earlier today. Uh, yeah, doing doing the beginner shop here, with selling the pokeballs um, yeah. gives you a little bit more budget early on, which makes the early game a little easier and more consistent. And, and here you can really see the yeah. difference between, like, experience between JT and Diego. JT is flying through these, this shop, these menus, and will probably leave or, like, leave soon after. Even though it was, like, 20 seconds later entering. Yeah, I mean, JT has picked this up, uh, this run up last year for the tournament and basically hasn't stopped running it since. So, uh, he's gonna have very good muscle memory for those menus. It's just something that comes with a lot of practice. I, I love these trainer passes. Diego did one. I'm sure you'll see JT as well. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that wasn't a scary one, but you can just like run straight at that, that one, even if it's like if he's looking down and you can just pass him if you have like the good timing. Yeah, if you if you hit look the at this one for pass. JT. Oh, smooth. Love to see it. No extras for either of these two runners. Uh, Pika version can get a Mankyo Sentru to, to spawn there. Eevee version can get an Ekans. Uh, those are optional catches for most runners. We don't usually plan on catching them, but if we see them, it's nice. We like to go for them. Extra EXP, extra catch. More importantly, you can get a very quick and easy Magic Carp here for just 500 Pokemon dollars. Yeah, I, uh, there, there's been a lot of discussion already around uh, the, the the inflation and such. And uh, again, I have something about that that puts things in an even weirder light. I would say. Just gonna but do we'll... okay. I just I just did a, a live conversion on what that would be. So the uh, currency Pokemon dollars is just one to one based on the Japanese currency yen. And mm -hmm. 500 yen nowadays are three dollars and eighteen cents. So that's the amount that uh, that magic card costs. I would I would consider that a steal. Yeah, that is not actually outrageous. All right, Pikachu keeps. Using the Oddish here, uh, mostly because of another trainer fight that's coming up that has a Sandshrew, and Sandshrew is, I said it uh, in my in the race that I commented yesterday, it is the bane of Pikachu's early game. Pikachu does not have a good way of dealing with ground types, uh, and so Pika, Pika runners just keep the Oddish in, use Absorb on the Sandshrew. And then just swap Pika back into the lead a little bit later than Eevee does. No bonuses for Tucker either. 
This is a lean early game for everyone except for that extra. Yeah, Tucker is a little bit better on experience at the moment, so. Yeah, got that glowing boob sore. Diego and JT definitely need a good moon. So let's see what JT gets in the bottom Not floor. Not what you want to see. Typical no? Gen 1 okay. runner okay, man experience. Zubats. Everywhere. But there was a, <laughs> there was two Parises. Okay, is so he going to catch the Zubat since he ran into it or is he just going to run away? Okay. He's going to run away. Zubat is an annoying catch here. Oh, okay. gets the glowing one even. Three Paris. Not a single Geodude or Teferi though. Or anything else pink. Yeah. Gonna be patient and wait. Ooh. At least for the dump, sadly, misses the excellent. Getting an excellent gives you a higher experience modifier as well as making the catch safer. So he's gonna miss out on a bit of experience here uh, from only uh, hitting the great. It is first ball, which gives a little bit more experience as well. Yeah. That's why we don't just always throw the Pokeballs at the Pokemon. We tend to wait for an opening to throw. Oh! <laughs> that was a Lord Paris that just despawned for Tucker because he hit the cutscene trigger. Okay, waiting for the spinner. Diego's getting some decent spawns here. Uh, GG glowing a Paris. Still no Clefairy spotted. But I feel like that's the basic Mamma Moon experience right there. Hmm. Not sure if this is gonna get in. Glowing Geodude. Double pokes. Eww. Nope. Yeah, sad. Gotta remember to swap to the greats. Geodude is also a bit annoying. Yeah. It has basically one cycle that it usually goes for, and it's actually pretty good because you can consist it's the one that Tucker just had, where you can basically usually get the excellent if you know it well. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't go for it, and then it's not as easy to hit the excellent. Okay, Jet Jet Hell is actually moving on here. Uh in EV version your lure runs out a little bit earlier since you start luring so early into Mount Moon, so probably has already given up on chance to get a Clefairy since that is much more common on the bottom floor. And that is not good experience to be at. Just just at level 13 right there. On EP. You want to hit level 15 uh, before exiting Mount Moon, or more precisely before trying to enter Misty's, uh, Misty's gym. And uh, to hit that, usually if you don't catch anything after Moon, you have to be like level 14 and about a quarter of the way to level 15. Tucker gets seven moons done here, very nice. Oh, and a Clefable! <laughs> You're gonna go okay. for it, yes? Uh, yeah. Pink thing. Yeah, looks like it. First depositing. Yeah, definitely a good idea. Especially because he had an evolved Butterfree in the party. Also, seems like he's gonna go for the Bulbasaur Evo. So yeah, Bulbasaur is not the, the fastest, but. Yeah, for Clefable, the catch rate is a lot worse, so we're doing double Great Balls and a Raz. And, yeah. and it's still not as likely as you would want it to be. No, we don't have our resident catch rate calculator in the chat right now, I think. Yeah. Speaking of Dynam. Uh, but I can't really be higher than like 60% or something. I think it's around 60 or 70, I forget exactly, but it's around that. Okay. It's also not an easy catch as well, because it's not easy to hit the excellent because it jumps around all the time.
That sounds about right, Amber. Let's stay then. Uh, which is the important part. Uh, Eevee on a, in a good spot now for Tucker. More than halfway to level 15. Have we seen a single Clefairy catch yet? I don't think so. It's another <laughs> situation where Clefable spawned before Clefairy. Is that a thing now in this tournament? It's a little concerning. Clefairy is usually a big experience bond here. Yeah. Okay, there's oh, a Clefairy. Oh, there's a Clefairy. Finally. <laughs> glowing, glowing, too. Tucker should be good on EXP anyway, but... Yeah, you wanna switch back yeah, to Great Plus Poke as well? Because you don't wanna waste Go all your Great Plus now. Interesting. That's usually not necessary for the Clefairy. Well, it's that gonna help the with the missing circle. the circle. Yeah. Yeah, it was the longest time in this game that we didn't really know how the catching worked and like what the odds were until like a bit over a year ago just before the last tournament there was like a lot of info found about how the catches worked for the longest time we didn't believe that the second ball that you used was doing anything because the color of the circle wasn't changing but it turns out that that does make a difference and also that hitting the circle makes a difference in catching chance. Yeah, and because of that, you're going to see runners gradually move on from weaker to stronger Pokeballs, starting off with double pokes, then just using one Great Ball, then eventually using two Great Balls, and then one Ultra, one Great Ball later in the run. Just to keep compensating for increasingly harder to catch Pokemon. Alright, and Jade Huddle's now going into the first Jess and James fight. It's not going to be 15 exiting, unless Clefairy shows up or something, but. So you might have to try and catch Clefable. something before. Cerulean. If not, there's always the option to do the Nugget Bridge section first, but it is a little slower. Yeah, there's a bunch of things that you can do. If you get to Cerulean and you're not level 15 yet, you can pick up the extra rare candy, which is a bit slow, because you have to go through four doors, basically, yeah. to get there and back again, and then... Uh, Depending on how far away from level 15 you are, you can also just do the rival fight and then do Misty and then return to the bridge. Or you can try to more or less wait out the spawns on Red 4. Okay, nothing for JP. Yeah, he, I think JT wants to borrow one of Tucker's yeah. fairies. <laughs> Let's see if JT can find an Ekans or something here. You can catch other things. Hero is not something you would bit. catch here normally, but you could if you wanted to try and mm -hmm. get 15. Rat is also an option. Yeah, Rata is one of those. Spawns. It spawns basically anywhere. Uh, another Clefairy for Tucker. <laughs> uh, Rattata basically spawns everywhere, so you can always pick it up if you need a little bit of extra experience. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more valuable in the early game. JT is uh, feeling cheated out of that excellent throw. Yeah. Oh, he barely no, doesn't. Oh no! It, well, it might, it might be Spiro time. Yeah. Might be early bird here. Okay, still waiting to see if there's anything else. Okay, yes. there's a few now, yeah. It's a little rough because 
This basically takes Firo off the of the menu. Uh, not, not according to Ergote. No, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but uh, Firo, I don't know, Fury. I think you you caught Firo in your latest PB. How was yes. that? <laughs> it was good. It was very fast. I hit the excellent. No breakouts, you know. Okay. Well, well in that case, I'm sure JT will just probably get. Three heroes on round ten. With the way his spawn luck is going. So, so you, so you would recommend it to others to like no. just go for Fero? <laughs> no. I cannot. As much as I love it. All right, Diego is now also on Jane J because a little bit of a different approach here, uh, relying on Thundershock, the special move. As opposed to EV, which of course has stab headbutt at this point already, which is huge. Now Diego will need to do bridge first because Pikachu is only level twelve. Level twelve, oh which no. Is a little too low. It's gonna hit thirteen over the Ekans, but that's rough. Yeah, there are not enough Pokemon in the world. Well, I mean to get like this a thing. like a glowing sand true that's decently high levels. Maybe yeah. I don't know. If he gets both, I think if he gets excellent throws on both of the optionals that can still spawn on the next route, maybe that would get him to 15, but yeah, it's, it's looking rough. There you go. Let's see what he gets here. I'm gonna pick up the PP up. Uh, another one of those safety strats, a little bit of. Actually, a lot of extra money for more items you can buy. And that's the rat. So, yeah, I was definitely gonna do. gonna have to do bridge first. Um, not even the rare candy can save him at this point. He's two levels off of 15. Do we mention the moves that they learned here? We haven't. Not today. So if you want to explain them, go ahead. Who wants to do the honors? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it then. Um, yeah, these, uh, these 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 starter Pokemon that we have there, they can't evol evolve like normal Pokemon starters can, but uh, they do have good stats and they added like something extra to them to make them even more special besides the slightly boosted stats that they already have and perfect IVs and that sort of things. Um, they also gave them some bonus moves. Um, and you could argue that they are all pretty absurd and overpowered. Um, Pikachu only gets one at this point. Um, and it's, uh, I think a 50 power physical attack, like, uh, but, uh, electric move that will always crit and has priority. I believe that's right. Yeah, so that's plus two priority. Um, and Eevee gets three moves here. Uh, one for every evolution. Um... And they're all 90 power moves. Uh, so one electric, one water, one fire. Um, and they all have a secondary effect. Uh, the electric move is a 90 power special move. So Thunderbolt. Uh, but it will always paralyze. Um, the fire uh, or the water move, uh, a 90 power special water move. Uh, but it will drain half the damage that it deals, like drain it back in HP, it's like Mega Drain, but then a water move, uh, and slightly stronger. Uh, and there's the fire move, um, it's a 90 power physical move, uh, that will always burn the target. Um, the oh problem no, Eevee is confused. Okay. Uh oh. Broke through, okay. The, the problem with um, those status moves that will always paralyze or always burn. In this game, status effects can add a lot of extra like lag delay to a fight. So um, 
We won't be using it that often as you might think. Uh, it's mostly focused on things where you can just like one shot things or for EV burn something that will like as a physical attacker that's like will do less damage. Um, where where Pikachu will just always use it. I'm surprised you explained all the moves without actually mentioning the name of the moves. I think. Yeah, yeah that that's on purpose. Uh, okay. Keeping the best for keeping the best for last, of course. Um, because the names are just uh, the favorite of people. Um, for, for Eevee, we have Buzzy Buzz, Bouncy Bubble, and as a fire move, Sizzly Slide. And 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 Pikachu also has a move. Like, it's Pikachu, uh, who cares, right, Thrift? I'll take that as a yes. It's Zippy Zap! How dare you! <laughs> Ooh, Diego. Oh, yeah, no. Diego having a rough time with this rival fight. Uh... Yeah, I think this is just the... Uh, experience of Diego, like, showing through that. Actually, I think he's gonna lose the rival fight. Yeah, I think it's a wipe, probably. Yeah. 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 In... Diego did go into the Pokemon Center to learn Zippy Zap, okay. so he yeah. will be teleported there. Yeah, it's just, in this game, a lot of things, uh, something that I, uh, Sometimes say to newer runners that if a fight doesn't go as planned, you can always cheat, and that is summon a second controller, or at least in a lot of fights. And I guess that's like if if things are going wrong in a fight like that for me, I would just summon a second controller and figure it out. Uh, I did it in a in my race yesterday. I like I got confused at a fight where I was like, oh, this this isn't good, and I hit myself. So it's like okay, uh, how to fix this? So in a second controller, take a turn like to, to do some healing and search and steal attack. But that's just ex experience in knowing like, okay, wh what can I do? What escape button is there? Okay, I can just summon the second controller and everything will be good. Diego did get the uh, rare caddy, by the way. It still didn't quite get him to 15, but it helps, I guess, with these Yeah, it's, yeah. during his um, run earlier today, uh, he was level 14 leaving Moon, or like leaving the grass there, and I was like, what should I do? And I was like, you can do the bridge first or, or get the nugget. Uh, so One thing you'll notice is Rival has the, potions. The Rival is the only trainer in the game that has potions. Um, and in this case, Diego could have avoided it if it, he had gone for a quick attack on turn 2. But that's like, it's something that you kind of forget a lot of the times, because it, it is literally the only trainer that has... potions. Okay, now we should be good. Yeah, the fight's going better now, that's good. He's gonna have to also go and fight at least the Venonet trainer to hit level 15. I, I would just finish the bridge now, like, walking back really won't. Yeah, probably. And so uh, this is the, the famous or infamous Nugget Bridge. The, the time of the run where we normally have every time to explain anything we want. Yeah, so I thought I'd actually we'd actually we could use this time to talk about the format and why this race is the way that it is. Uh, because of course this year we're using a Swiss format for the tournament instead of the double elimination that we had last year, uh, which means that there's actually a points system uh, in play where. In a regular three-way race, the winner will earn three points. Um, the loser will get zero, and the second-place finisher will get either one or two points, depending on whether they beat the median time. 
of every racer in that round. Uh, now, Tucker versus Diego, that's a two-way race. Uh, and in that case, the winner of that will get three or two points, depending on whether they beat the median time. And then the runner-up will get zero or one point, again, depending on whether they beat the median time. And Jay Tattles, of course, was also in one of those two-way races before uh, his opponent had to leave the tournament. Uh, which now means that he's already locked into getting at least two points for his first race here. He really only needs to beat the median time to get three. And of course, yeah. because uh, a DNF Sorry, because DNF uh, always will mean zero points for you. He can't just say, you know, I'm not, not even going to run. He does need that finishing time to get the points. Yeah, the, when we were like planning this this year, um, we really wanted to like make it friendly for newer players, uh, but also have more interesting races early on. And so the Swiss was a good solution to that because it guarantees at least three races for everyone. Uh, but at the same time, starting from round, like the round two, we could get basically a finals level match already between three of the top runners of the game because you will be matched against people with, your sa with the same amount of points. So that's going to be like uh, some very exciting races and, and races will be a lot closer together because, uh, well, people with zero points will be playing against other people with zero points. So for like the, the, the top runners, this will be the easiest round. And for the newer players, it will be the hardest round because after this, they will get to play against people of a somewhat similar skill level. We see a question from uh, Okatexati in the chat about uh, medium time. It's all racers in the round. Yes. And it also means, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. For for DNS, we're going to count the maximum number of time. Uh, we have a time limit of three hours and forty minutes. So, Which I believe is reduced from last year. I think last year we had a four-hour cutoff. Yeah. Yes. Last year we had a lot more newer runners, That's and true. realistically, hardly anyone actually took longer than 340, so... Yeah. It should be okay. Yeah, it just made it easier to plan. The bracket document should also include the current median time and should be updated as the races finish. Yeah, this does mean that any participant in a two-way race, as well as any second place finisher of a three-way race, will only know their exact point total after every race is run. Because the median time has the potential to shift after every race. Of course, if you are already, like, I don't know, multiple minutes faster than the median time, you can probably feel safe that you're gonna get the higher uh, point amount, but I can still move around quite a bit during these next races. In yeah, this round. I'm, I'm going to expect it to be like somewhere in the 306, 307 range. The medium time. Yeah, current medium time is 309, I believe. Uh... Or like, I, I would feel good with a 306. Like, safe with a 306. Yeah. And a 307, I would be like, hmm, maybe okay. Yeah, I think yeah, a 307 a... is probably still okay. But yeah, after that, I don't know. There's a lot of very strong, very competitive races still coming up where uh, the median will probably get lowered. 
So you definitely can't feel safe just beating a 309 if you want to get those extra points. And the points aren't just aren't just used to seed the next round, uh, which she already explained. But of course, you also need those points to qualify for the semi-finals. So that's going to be like a top nine, three races with the top nine runners. And, and um, even and even for round four, because we for round four we are going to eliminate people who are no longer able to make uh, those semi-finals. Exactly. So it's not just for seeding, it's also for qualification for the finals round. Yeah. So, in the meantime, we are finally done with Nugget Bridge. Diego still has to do Misty, um, but Tucker and JT are... Well, Tucker is heading to Route 6, JT is already there, already caught a full picks. Um, Usually you want to catch a few things. This route is more important for Pika, because you also need... You basically need a Growlithe. Uh, that's usually what you want to get here, and potentially other things. For Eevee it's less relevant, but you still usually want to catch a couple of things here. Especially for experience, so you can be at a decent level uh, when you hit the rival fight coming up. Yeah, not like in Sheep's Run yesterday, where nothing showed up for you. No nope. Jigglypuff, no Bopex, even with the lore on the way back up. That was rough to watch. Yeah, the other two getting Abras and Search Sand. Yeah. But Jethel's getting both the Vulpix and the Jigglypuff here, which are the two that you really want to get on this route. Uh, there's a couple of other things that you can catch if you want to, like a Pidgey or even a Rattata. Uh, gets the Vermilion skip here as well, or Route 6 skip, or whatever you want to call it. Just walking precisely in the middle between those two trainers will mean that you skip both of them. If you've never seen it before, it may look a lot easier than it actually is, because it is pretty precise. Yeah. So Chris, uh, picking up uh, random uh, items from the ground, and he found an extra nugget. So... That's some good money item. I think that may have just been the regular nugget. No, it was not an item ball. Or like it was a, a light further. I mean, the nugget is a hidden item. Yeah, but it was like a, a, six lights down instead of five okay. lights. I, I didn't precisely count. I, I wasn't sure what was going on. Honestly. And it was like a bit, a bit too far to the left for that regular one. That's really in the middle. Yeah, there's okay. several hidden items in the other ground. The nugget that we yeah. always catch is a guaranteed. And then uh, the, the other ones are, are... Uh, a chance to be a nugget, a big pearl, a pearl, or uh, what is it? Pretty, Pretty wing? wing. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also a lure, uh, or a max lure, or a super lure also there. Well. But yeah. In that case, getting another nugget is really lucky. Gonna mean you're gonna be able to, I don't know, get some extra repels and lures just to make the catching a little bit easier in case it goes awry. Yeah. JT did sell the fossil, which is something that usually people do on normal PV attempts. For races, sometimes people keep the fossil and grab uh, a PP up uh, outside Mount Moon, which Diego, for example, did. So, which gives us an indication that Diego might be keeping the, the fossil. And the reason this is a good safety strat is because you can use the fossil with later if you don't have uh, the catches and you need it. Uh, in my run yesterday with the low catch count, I was thinking about that fossil. I didn't sell it. I was like, if uh, if, if things if things go wrong, I can uh, I can still get that. And and so d during uh, our talk. Uh, about the foreign search, we completely missed our uh, our, our, our the favorite uh, detective Eevee and Pikachu bit, of course. And oh. I I was I was listening yesterday to some Chancy. Oh, Chancy. Bon <laughs> go for it. Uh, uh, some 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 suggestions about uh, digging through the wall and such, but my 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 thing here, the the idea that I have, um, is that the these footprints, like. Yeah. 
five minutes ago, we saw someone who transformed into a Pokemon with somewhat r roughly same type of footprint. I think Bill broke through this house. Ooh, now that's a twist. Yeah. I, 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 I never heard anyone about that, but <laughs> I, I, I think Bill is uh, guilty. Bill's secret life of crime. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, more importantly, uh, Jake Tyler's on the boat driver right now. Uh, Best Rod died because yeah. wing attack getting exists. Outspat. Yeah. It's it's preferable that Bellsprout dies than getting sand attack. Yes. The ideal scenario if you are outspat is just getting sand attack on the Bellsprout. Uh, mm -hmm. But the Bellsprout dying is totally fine, especially if you have um, other pokes, which you won't always have. Like if you have a really bad Route 6 and nothing spawns and you just go, you could end up here with just the two pokes, and then if Bellsprout dies, you have to finish the setup with Eevee, which is not ideal. Um, but yeah, getting outsped here is... It was gonna be a given because uh, JT has a minus speed Eevee. Um, although, even with a neutral Eevee, you can sometimes get outsped here, so... Yeah, depending that's, on your experience. Yeah, you, you need, or... That's why you always need to have like good experience, or you want to have it. Yeah, if you have like level 19, then you're speed tied at the worst. Yeah. Alright, Tucker and Jet Huddle's about to handshake here. Jet Huddle's leaving the boat, Tucker entering the first, the second floor, excuse me. High five! <laughs> Alright, Diego going into Route 6 now. It's gonna be looking for a Growlithe. Yeah, this this uh, route, like Fury said earlier, is hugely important for Pikachu. Gonna need that Growlithe, and there it is, perfect. Glowing 2, which will help with uh, Diego's experience, which still isn't very good. That's the excellent, very good. Well, JT is. Uh, yeah, the million skip again. again. Yeah. Easy. No worries at all. Most people say it's easier uh, to do the skip when you go from the bottom. Um, I know Triv doesn't necessarily agree with this. <laughs> yeah, well, that's my, my that's my own issues. Yeah. I don't know. It's harder for me for some reason. In general, to... people have a harder time going from the top. It's totally subjective, honestly. Yeah. I, 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 I hit the trainer yesterday, like, coming from the top, and I didn't hit it walking back up, so... Well... <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds logic out there. <laughs> so, I, I think it's a lot easier going, like, from below... Uh, That just makes sense, you know? It's... Hmm. Yep. Sounds solid. So, J Tablets made it to Route 9, it's gonna evolve the Jigglypuff with the Moonstone. Eevee version doesn't need the Moonstone for anything else, so Jigglypuff is the best thing that you can evolve since it's the only Moonstone Evo that does not try to learn a move uh, on evolution. So, might as well use it here and then deposit the Weekly Tough. So this is Route 9. Route 9 is usually relatively okay with Eevee. It's a little bit rough um, on Pika. And it's where you'll start seeing especially the the 2C strats come into play from Pika. And where Pika will basically not be used as much. But it, it'll be a while before Diego gets her, I guess. 
Yeah, for now we're just gonna see some EV on EV action here. Yeah, JT using the guard spec. Uh, we buy a guard spec specifically for this fight because this EV has a bunch of moves that can ruin you. So you like uh, growl, tail whip, and sand attack, I think. Yep. And then so, Swift is the fourth attack, but that of course yeah. doesn't get blocked by guard spec. Took her no problems with the skip either. Very good. Yeah, the growl and the sand attack are the two uh, moves that you're worried about there on EP version, because Tail Whip really doesn't do anything for the fight. Uh, since that EV only has Swift as an attacking move, which is, of course, a special move, uh, it's not even going to benefit from hitting you with Tail Whip. But if you get hit with sand attack, you're going to. Ooh! Abra for Diego, very nice. It was worse uh, yeah, if you're gonna hit, get hit with sand attack, you're gonna start missing, and if you're gonna hit, get hit with growl, there's just no way that you one-shot the things that you want to one-shot. It's... D Diego doesn't have the Nana berries. No. Oh. So, that makes it very hard to hit the Abra. Yeah, it's a little unlucky. But, nice that it stays in. There are some uh, static Nana berries that you can get just before the underground. Um, yeah. But, but usually yeah, you're going to have Nana berries anyway because you get them randomly uh, from catches. But in this case, I guess Diego just wasn't lucky enough to get those uh, or just use them. I don't think that was the case. But Yeah, and also it's just um, an experience thing with like uh, knowing. Close. Oh. Like knowing to look for that sort of thing and like knowing where they are and then picking This them is up. the one that's not a two shot, right? Or. Uh, oh, no, the rock. best shot is a two shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. For Eevee, both of these are usually a one shot. Unless you have hero. a bad nature or a bad experience. For Pika, unfortunately, this one is a two shot. The so Charmander is, yeah. I think, also a two shot usually, unless. You hit it on the way back, and you already have some decent experience. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, it, this skip is more punishing for Pika, for sure, if you miss it. Yeah, so JT is now on the, like, the next very important catch bit of the run. Um, it's Was where there a Fero on screen? Died. But there's a Fero there, and okay. uh, JT caught a... <laughs> Uh, I'm watching. We caught the, 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 the Spiro earlier, so... Okay, and you're in female. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Was it? Not a, these are not good spawns for Jade Hattles. Uh Was he trying to stop the Fero with the second controller? Maybe. <laughs> so it wouldn't uh, run off. I, I wouldn't put it past him to go for it now. It, it could be just really marked. Fero is not an easy catch. Even though I have never had a break up from it, but it is not an easy catch. It's what? It's level 24? It has just destroyed in chat that he's gonna try, if I understand correctly, so. Uh... Oh, yeah, we're going for it. Maybe a few attempt. I approve. I don't care how many times this breaks out. This, this gets good. success probability calculator. Ooh, okay, this is this is a little awkward. Okay, good. Didn't move. Eighty-two percent with a great. Oh, oh no! <laughs> this is actually really awkward because JT doesn't have nanabs either. Okay, got in. Let's oh, go. Oh, easy. Let's go. <laughs> I'm proud of you, JT. I wasn't worried. Yeah, me neither. I actually don't know what the odds are with that. Uh, I assume the Raz makes it somewhat reasonable. Yeah, if if, if this <laughs> calculator <laughs> is correct, it's like uh, sixty-three percent, which seems no circle? high, but because it didn't hit the circle. Yeah, without circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with an excellent, that should be relatively reasonable, I guess. Problem is, 
Yeah, Spear it, 9% uh, excellent yeah. and rest. The problem with Hero is that it doesn't always have that cycle, it sometimes just moves around and then you kind of need to nanite it. It also seems that the Fero catch just got JT and a nap. He had an nap when he was going for the rest right there, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh... Timing. Hero gave him nanaps, okay. That's pretty funny. Ooh, there's a Krabby for Tucker. Yeah, Tucker's getting all the good spawns here. Yeah. I would say, like, both of these runners have not, like, it's not a bad one so far. This Route 10 can be very twirly. I mean, the spawns for JT have not been great. He has he's got, um, one meter, both meters. Then the Fero and Eradicate after seeing like five evolved Nidorinos running around. Obviously, since he's already caught a Ravitan as Fero earlier, and the only other thing he could hope for is a Krabby, but. It was still a lot of Nidorinos, that's all I say. Yeah, but again, I, I don't think it's bad per se. Like that's 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 reasonable for how route tens can go. I don't know. I feel like my standards for route ten are a little bit higher. I, if I have to go for Lure Pal, I'm gonna be annoyed at that. Meanwhile, Diego is finishing up the boat rival fight. Um, it looks like his experience is back on track now. It's level 20 Pika now, so should hopefully be okay uh, in terms of experience from now on. And here we're seeing the first instance of using the Growlis. Um Pika, you know, we all talk about how EV is better than Pika. And it's you know it's a fact because we barely use Pika anyway uh, on the Pika route because we end up using a bunch of other pokes. To help we all out. agree on that. I think we all agree on that, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting bullied on this stream. It's not <laughs> even quick, funny. Quick, quick, mute, mute, mute trip. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a shame we can't really like see the two, like r r like the, the walk up there uh, between the two versions, like next uh, uh, next to each other, because then you can really see the difference between how different both versions take these two routes because it really is completely different yeah yeah for sure and for pika it's much scarier as well because it, it also depends a lot on what your growlith is uh which is random well I, I wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily call it scarier it is uh if you can't get growlith to level 18 you're basically always going to be fine uh which is why you usually want to catch the growlith first on route 6 uh, when you get it, so you can get the Jigglypuff experience and experience from other mons that you want to catch there. Uh, but yeah, if your Gratis is level 17, there's going to be some ranges, uh, because Flamethrower is not going to take out everything reliably. So Diego hit, missed the skip earlier, so you can just stick to the right there. Yeah, see, going up is a lot easier. <laughs> I'm sure Diego agrees. Yes. Are JT and Tucker on the same fight? Yeah, they are on the same fight. Yeah, they are on the same fight, yes. <laughs> JT is to catch the head, though. Yeah. I don't want to invoke the 30 seconds uh, copy, the copy pasta, pasta here, but uh, you can definitely say that. JT is a bit ahead here. It doesn't really matter for Tucker since, again, they are not directly competing. But uh, it's interesting to see two runners so close to each other. Honestly, I'm surprised that there's no command for the 30 second copy pasta. There it is. <laughs> 
It is in the Discord. It is in the Discord. And it's actually you, Phoenix, that put it there, or at least the last, the one I'm looking at. It's put by you. <laughs> there you go. Well, JT made it to uh, Rock 10 and another major catching section back to back with uh, Rod 10. It's going to be a bunch of uh, Pokemon that everyone wants to catch here, really, for both versions. There's, there's really no difference here. Uh, starting off with the Zubat is perfectly fine, and then you're looking for Dryhorn and Graveler. JT did walk past the Graveler right there. Uh, Rhyhorn you want to catch because it's going to be a right Pokemon, uh, which increases the movement speed, and then Graveler just gives a lot of experience, so that's why that's valuable. Oh, that doesn't kill. Okay. Yeah, the slip off is a range, but with plus special... It's still a range. It's still a range, yeah, I guess. This is still 24. That's a Rhyhorn for Jet yeah. Hells, so can already cross that off. Love to see a Rhyhorn in the first room here. That is a weird. Okay. It doesn't attack, that's weird. Rhyhorn is one of the most consistent in terms of cycles. Yeah, you can always catch like, usually red goes. And yeah. The catch usually always goes the same way. Not this time. Uh, yeah, usually people Raz, Rhyhorn, and also Graveler to guarantee uh, the catch, especially because they're, especially Graveler, um, are good for experience. And you want to get them first fall. Please don't go for gold budget, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, get your spawns. Actually, going for Fio, I would not have been too surprised. <laughs> okay, uh, I a... disagree with with Cobat as well. <laughs> yeah, Golbat is just a worse Fio. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you already caught Zubat right before. Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Once he threats. <laughs> forgot to press A on the second controller. That's unfortunate on the breakout. What's going oh, on? maybe it's not working? Okay. I, oh, no. Yeah, I think it might be like. Maybe just go at this point? Or... Oh, there it is. Disconnected. Okay, there we go. No, it's it. Not working. Nope. Yep. Oh, There's no. 18 chats. That's unfortunate. You have to reset it. it. Hmm. Well, call on the second attempt. Diego, meanwhile, getting to route 10. Next up, Graveler for Jet Adults, and that's the major catch just done for him. He can still get a Machop, I believe. Yeah, he does not have a Machop yet. That's the only other one that he could still get. Obviously, there's a couple of options that you can go for if you're desperate, or if they even show up, like, I don't know, Kangaskhan or the Rare Charmander. Yeah, and I think JT waited for the Graveler catch to had some more in the party because the Graveler gives a lot of EXP. I think this one was also glowing, right? No. Okay. Oh, that was a regular one, yeah. That might signify that he wants to use the Rhyhorn and hide it out. I don't know. If, if there was a run Rhyhorn... to use Eevee on J and J, it would be this one because special attack. It's plus special. Well, it is minus speed. I mean, that's you almost never outspeed to Arbok, and you always outspeed to Weezing. Somebody say Charmander. I'm pretty sure. So it doesn't really change that fight too much. That is a lot of Golbats, okay. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, Rhyhorn is usually also pretty helpful um, in fights. Yeah, it doesn't give you CMUs in Pika version, funnily enough, even though that's the version that relies way more on partner Pokemon. You can use it on J&J, basically, on Pika. Yeah, that's the only one. That's the basically only the only fight where you use where it. Where is relevant, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing, right, uh, for Diego here on Route 10. He really needs to get one of those Nidos and that's a Nidor and May right there. Perfect. Uh, because that's going to be the next partner Pokemon alongside Pikachu with the Gradith, uh having done its job on Route 9. This is the reason you want to keep the, the Moonstone on Pika, if you have only one. If you want to use it on one of the needles, ideally the male. You can yeah, also reason... run Needle Queen, but it's usually yeah. not as good. The reason why we would prefer Needle King is, uh, on the one hand, it has slightly higher attack, but much more importantly, it comes knowing Poison Jab, which of course it gets the same type of attack bonus on, uh, whereas Needle Queen comes learning crunch if you catch it as a Nidoran female, uh, which is a strong dark type move, but Nidoran Queen doesn't get the same type attack bonus on it, which means it's not gonna have the same one-shot potential on, on many of the Pokemon that Nidoran King does get to one-shot. The only, uh, the only I'm completely blanking right now. <laughs> Entirely lost my train of thought, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, we, we... So, Pika basically uses usually Nido King. Um, you ideally want to get a Nidoran male uh, and not Nidorino. You can also use Nidorino, but it doesn't come with Poison Jab, which means you have to use Thrash. Uh, just not as good. But it's still serviceable. Uh, for Queen, you usually want to have the Nidoran... Uh, female and not the Nidorina, because the Nidorina then doesn't come with Crunch, as far as I remember. There are ways, as far as I remember from reading the notes, to go without either. But yeah, I've that's why you have to fall back. That's why you have to fall back on the right horn. Yeah. As a partner. It's just not very good. Obviously, uh, a race scenario is probably the only scenario where you will actually see someone go for that strat. Because in an MPB attempt, he just reset at that point. It's so, so bad if you don't get either and either. Yeah, yeah here we see uh, JT getting uh, burnt on this Vilpix. And, like, okay, fight went wrong. That makes the fight, like, dangerous. This cadaver could, like, be a range or something, so... Just summon the second controller and... It is a little unfortunate because now Rhyhorn gets hit as well. So especially bulky Rhyhorn. Yeah. Rhyhorn can die there. Yeah. Which is also not great. Um, living on red HP is also not great, but it's slightly better, I guess. Yeah, one thing we also... I don't... Don't if you mentioned uh, the needles have both have helping hand, uh, which we will be using uh, throughout uh, the run on many fights. Actually, a lot of Pokemon yeah. have helping hand. Arcanine also has helping hand later, if needed. Exactly, that Pika just gets all of those helping hand uses with the needles and the Arcanine. Eevee gets helping hand. <laughs> he doesn't learn. <laughs> yeah. True. Level 31. Level, level 30, yeah, 31, yeah, okay. Very useful at that point. Super size my shop for J Tattles, okay. It's gonna be set on experience. Yeah. And he just has to not hit that spinner, okay? <laughs> and dodge all of that. That is bats. so very awkward. Oh, oh, oh there's oh, the shard. Red shard, red shard. <laughs> <laughs> Going in. 
I like this. Yeah, yeah I already I had the Ultra Balls, so this is definitely a good, yeah. uh, good choice. So you get Ultra Balls on the last fight that JT just did, the one where he got burned. Um, yeah, the one turf first. And the Ultra Balls make some of these catches. Like Onyx is another one that it's a lot more reasonable. Um, it's usually not a good idea anyway, but it's it's a lot more reasonable with Ultras. Same with Kangaskhan or any of the others. Also goes for double edge here. Yeah. Uh, EP lands double edge at 28, so if you hit it reasonably early, uh, it's a very powerful move to have. Only downside is that it uh, does recoil damage to EV, so you gotta keep track of that HP stat. But uh, make some of those fights a lot more, a lot simpler. You can one shot some things that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So Tucker and JT are actually neck and neck at this point. They have the same amount of catches, they're in the same spots. Oh, Tucker gets an Onyx there. Which brings back JT into the lead. Uh, they're both pretty good on catches, exiting tunnel. 32 is something you want to have. Oh, I'm oh there's a Kangaskhan. <laughs> Diego's queen, it's also glowing. Alright. Don't go for that, Diego. No, no, no. Doesn't have ultra balls yet, so really shouldn't go for the gang scan. Nah. I, I'm, I'm looking at the, the 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 go power distribution for JT. And okay. because I could like screenshots while How many uh, go powers did JT get on each well, of the Well, I mean, stats? we know the, the, the mount because that's always the same. It's, at this point, 23 in total. Um, but I don't know exactly where like the distribution is, but I see he only got like one of them is special attack. And uh, five of them are in attack. One is in oh. HP. Okay. And some in defense and in special defense. One I mean, in special that's, defense. That's a good EV. Yeah. Five attack. Only one special attack. So. Both of our EV runners are about to go into level 4 here. It's going to be another 2C fight. Where even EV needs a little bit of support, not just Pika. That is true, uh, but for the most part it's it's X items. Yeah, yeah, but... For the most part. You yeah, can for, use for, Rhyhorn uh, on one of the pokes, but yeah. For, for JT it will just be double edge. Yeah, exactly. If you have double edge, this fight is actually pretty good because you can just plus two um, the right two. And we'll see what like strat Tucker will use. Outsped by the so still minus speed, so outsped by this fight. These are the like the, the rival fights are the main problem usually with minus speed because of the yeah. Pidgeotto because it always has yeah. hand attack as well. Uh, luckily, yeah, we went even... for wing attack there. Yeah, so this is where the Rhyhorn is actually used. Yeah, not going for the... Yeah, it's weird that... Edge. Yeah, it could have used... Double Edge Strat. Maybe just like... This is the normal way I do this fight. It, it doesn't really change that much for the fight, yeah. so... It's fair. All right, well, both runners making it through this fight unscathed. No missed drill runs, as far as I could tell. Does Tucker have double edge? Probably not. I did not pay attention. Okay. If he doesn't, then we're going to see a metronome. Unless Clefairy gets flinched. So there's a, an upcoming trainer that has a Clefairy, which uses metronome. 
uh, which is uh, very exciting for stream usually. And JT, JT hates it. Yeah, JT... Actually, Double Edge is still a range at 28, I think. Yeah, but not with 5 AVs in attack. Okay, in that case, should be good. Um, if you have Needle King on Pika, uh, Poison Jab also one-shots it. So you don't get the Metronome. Uh, but if you don't have Poison Jab, then you're going to be two-shotting it. Which means you will get uh, something from, from the Clefairy. With oh, Eevee, so... if you don't have Double Edge, you can use a Headbutt, which can flinch, uh, meaning you could be fine. Uh, but yeah. So, what's it been your worst fight, Triffin Fury? I and actually haven't had debut. anything that cursed. The mo I mean, the funniest one I had was Whirlwind, I guess. I guess. Yeah. That's I had pretty a, much it. I had a situation once when I was still running EV, so this was like a year and a half ago, uh, where it used Whirlwind turn one. Then a sleeping move turn two, I believe. I can't actually remember what it was exactly, but it took me like five turns to finish that fight because I had to swap something else back in and then that got status immediately and I had to heal the status and it was rough. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a thunder wave into minimize into sand attack. Oh Ooh. god. <laughs> <laughs> That is quite a combo. That was I like, believe okay, GT... Time, time, for, time, for, time for two controller and stomp on Rhyhorn. Uh. <laughs> I believe JT has had Horn Drill before. Yeah, I definitely heard someone say Fissure. Uh, in the yeah. context of this metronome. So... That's a nightmare. Sadly, so. we didn't really see anything because Tucker also flinched the Clefairy. Yeah. There's and, a yeah. There's there's an Abra on screen for Tucker as well. It's a bit in an, an awkward spot because he's gonna probably have to round the spinner. Oh, in the and JT. Oh, and everyone is getting Abras today. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, it, and, and 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 Fury, if you check under your desk, you get an Abra. <laughs> yes. I see it. It's a birthday present, so... <laughs> I don't know if I want that present. Ooh, that is a weird throw. Motion controls. Hopefully it gets in. I did not... Is okay. Tucker... There's a break. Tucker's going for an early Firestone here. Oh, okay. About this is a strat you normally matter. only see on... Pika? Because you Firestone the Growlithe to get Arcanet, and usually you only do it if you didn't get a Rhyhorn, so you can get the early ride. Uh, yeah, you cannot ride yeah. Ninetales. It is a pretty Pokemon to look at, but it, you can't really ride it, unfortunately. I, I really wish you could ride Ninetales, it would be so cool. Yeah. Sadly. With that said, Ninetales is something that EV runners eventually get a lot of the time. Um, but we can get a Firestone later and just do it basically near the end of our catch route. Yeah, so we know if we need the one extra Pokemon or not. Yeah. It's usually a nice way to like even out the, the catch route. And there's, there's even like... EV runners like it so much, there's even a category to catch 60 of them. For no particular reason. Anyway, uh... It's, it's, a, nice, it's a nice number. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jtel is now synchronizing the... nature right here, so from now on every other Pokémon that he catches during the run will have modest nature. You gotta remember to do that. Don't wanna end up with a cam. Starmie. Now going into the Eradicate fight and hide out. This fight is pretty scary uh, for EV version if you don't have double edge. Yeah, the Eradicates are pretty... pretty strong uh, against EV. 
Okay, double edge. It's definitely very good here. And then it you can couple that with the, the drill end. run. Yeah, Ryan yeah. didn't even get to move the double edge, just took care of it. Which is uh, such an improvement over if you don't have double edge. In my memory, I don't know if this chat has changed over time, but I remember that type being very annoying in EP version. It, it's just it takes time and you always have to heal afterwards. I mean, you still have to heal with double edge, but... Diego doesn't notice spinner patterns there yet. Like, in that last room you can just like... Hold down left and you will just miss those spinners. They have no trainer vision, really. Yeah, that's really a thing with this game. The spinners don't have very good eyes. Well, some have like really long vision, but... Yeah, the ones in the water on Route 21 have really long vision. <laughs> But, uh... Yeah, or, or the guy in, in, in Rock Tunnel just after that uh, Vulpix Cadabra fight. That, that would have been a perfect one to only have like two blocks of range vision, but no. Yeah, it's really inconsistent. Sometimes it's, uh, it benefits us because we can dodge the trainers entirely. Even when yeah, they've I... been historically required, but uh, some of them really just see you from miles away. Or well, I guess this is, a, is an all-European commentary team, I should say, kilometers away. <laughs> yes, please. And, and yes, we're like... The, these runners are not European, but... That, that is true. Why do we have a <laughs> an I'm NA sure race it's... on? Or uh, I don't actually I'm know not where sure Diego, where Diego is from. Now. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I don't know. Where Colombia, it... I believe. Yeah. Okay. But still, it's it's weird that this is a very EU friendly time zone. Time. I mean, some so, some some EU friendly, like some pe people from the EU run at five a.m. So. <laughs> Yeah, couldn't be me, but uh, it could did be Argo. You, didn't you sign up for commentary for that, though? <laughs> I definitely did no. not. No, that's going to okay. be Phoenix and Aspect. So. As <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Aspect get. is to be expected. Phoenix, I yeah. think it's a little late as well, but oh well. Uh, I believe she's on Mountain Time, so uh, starts at like 9, 9 p.m. for... Phoenix. Yeah. And surprisingly, it's not the race with the Australian runner. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Hands on race. So, one thing I don't know if we mentioned is that in general in Hideout, there's a lot of different strategies for all the fights. We did mention, like, having double edge was important, for example, for the Radicate. But uh, nearly all the fights have multiple ways um, that you can choose from, and usually you just end up uh, selecting your strategy uh, based on what nature you have, how, what your experience looks like, uh, what kind of Rhyhorn you got, for example, uh, if you're playing... Uh, well, if you're playing both games, I guess. With double yeah, edge, so with the, double edge, you have a tendency to use a lot, uh, to use to just basically double edge everything or most things. Uh, but it also means you have to heal a lot, so there's trade offs, I guess, with all of them. Yeah, and that's and and what what like where can you like tweak that a bit? But I, I do I do like that like. Yeah, it's not like, like no bridge. Like, no, no, that's just definitely not repeatable. Where, where I, for me, when I'm at Nugget Bridge, like I just use different moves because I'm like bored of, of that bit. Yeah. Oh, I'll use Sisley Slide on this one. Okay. Doesn't matter. 
So for those of you watching at home, do not step on the rolling chairs. Maybe we should try it all as like commentators. I'm I'm not gonna do that. I do have a rolling chair. I'm sitting in one, so Yeah, same. Okay, so yeah, let's see. see like like Sorry. JT and, and Tucker are still somewhat neck and neck here. Uh, Tucker got an extra Evo or an extra catch. Yeah, I am interested uh, to see what the strat will be here on J and J for JT. Yeah, because he has a plus special uh, EV. Yeah, but not enough special tech to one shot. Yeah, in that case, maybe Rhyhorn strats. The Rhyhorn strats also like heavily depend on what kind of Rhyhorn you get, but I do feel it's a little more consistent, um, at least from my experience. Because what you want ideally is to have a two-turn, um, or maybe a three-turn, uh, but it depends on on your ranges. It, it, and it really depends on like what Jesse and James want to attack. Yeah. Because if they want to, they can just annihilate the Rhyhorn. Eevee is a bit bulkier. We'll need at yeah. least like a crit to die in. Pika is not, for example. So... Rhyhorn strats are also used on Pika a lot of the times. It's okay, so... the round strat here, yeah. So Rhyhorn Strat. Which is also what... There's the Avoid, that's pretty annoying. Uh, one of the disadvantages of using Rhyhorn Strats is that Drill Run can miss. It's supposed to be 95% It is 95%, so usually you're fine, but yeah. Yeah, this is really annoying. It's, this is probably the worst one to miss, because both books are still out as well. And it's even good enough to just Oko the Arbok, so really, really sad yeah. to have missed that. Oh, Power of Love. Or Passive Legends. Good. Take it off on your bingo cards. <laughs> yeah, smooth sailing. Uh, smooth sailing after that. Drew uh, miss. Yeah, could have been a lot worse. Yeah, luckily, JJ targeted. Let's see what Tucker's got. Hat. Meanwhile, Diego not catching anything here on. I forget the number of this route. Tucker's going for the regular Gliciclo. Yeah, Gliciclo strats. We didn't even mention that. Eevee learns. One more move in the Celadon Center, Glitziglo, another one of those special moves. 90 power, special psychic type move that sets up a light screen, which is very nice for this fight because it weakens Weezing's attack. Yeah, unfortunately Glitziglo is not usually going to be a, a one-shot on both folks. It's a very hard range to, to get, you need to have really good special attack. Which is why uh, some runners prefer to use Rhyhorn most of the time, because it's generally a little more consistent. Yeah, you need a, a lot of special tech too. Yeah. You can also usually outspeed the Weezing, you can also outspeed the Arbok depending on your speed, which can be pretty helpful in this fight. I don't think either of them outsped it. Well, definitely not JT. And now we're on Archer. We will fight Archer twice. Um, this one is kind of okay. Archer can be annoying on this a bit, but usually doesn't waste you too much time. The second one will be... We'll talk about it when we get there, but yeah, it's, it's pretty rough.
Hugo now also in the hideout, gonna fight the Hypno Trainer. This is the one fight where Needle Queen has a better uh, strategy because it has Crunch. Yeah, and the, and the Queen has a decent shot at just one-shotting this Hypno with Crunch because it's super effective, but if you know the King is good and you have high enough experience, uh, you can at least get a one turn with Nidoking King and Poison Jab. Sadly, it doesn't look like this Nidoking King has super high attack or anything. So yeah. it's just the, the standard two turn fight for Diego. Uh, well. Anyway, Jet Hell's on Giovanni right now. This is this can be a little bit scary for Eevee, because you're gonna yeah. set up an X item and then go for the Sissy side, so you gotta have to tank two hits from the Persian before the burn has its attack. Yeah, and especially if it's it's like 90% sure to fake out turn one. But when it slashes the first turn, then you're like, what's happening? Yeah, it's really bad. Because uh, for those of you that don't know, slash is a high crit move, which makes it even more scary. And just a lot more powerful than it's what, 70? Yeah. Power in attack instead of 40. JT is not picking up the Max Revive. I think he already revived two things, so... Oh, that's actually interesting. Not picking up the Ultra Balls either, which makes sense. He has already 20, like 35 catches. Yeah, with this catch route. He only has... Five catches left. Ooh, Tucker gets crit here. Probably has to heal now. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have to heal that. It's so annoying that this person attacks with slash, gets same type attack bonus, and it's a high crit rate. And sometimes it even leads with slash, and then you're in really hot water. Yeah. And sometimes just get too shocked by this thing, which is very unfortunate. There's not really much you can do. Of course, Pika just does this fight with two controllers, and it's much safer. There is also a very risky version of this fight. If you have good enough attack, yeah. you can just X attack double edge, but it is extremely scary. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've like. Got the range, but died from the the recoil. The recoil. So, yeah. like, you also have to have a high enough defense and not get crit. And it's a super niche scenario for sure. Yeah, it's kind right, of a desperate Tucker. play sometimes. Check us out with hideouts. Uh, JT in tower. Probably gonna look for a ghastly. I hope. Okay, gets the, isn't ringing. gets the spinner gets the pass. Skip. That one spinner pass in tower is uh, has very particular timing. Timing. Was that the one you hit, Chip? Chip? Yeah, that was the one where my doorbell rang at that point. Oh. I don't know what's going on with Cocker. Okay, stream died. Okay. Oh, Fury, you go do some tech stuff. I completely forgot okay. I was on tech for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like tech is news back. I was about to like, wait, what is going on? Why is no one doing anything about this? And then... 
I realized it was the me. the perils of being on tech and commentary at the same time. We're good now. I will say these are very high catch counts, actually. Like higher oh, than usual, I would say. Oh, <laughs> Doing a little dance. It's okay, like he has 35 pokes. Yeah. There's another guest It's frustrating to see the... <laughs> Doing see the 2 casting. Steve fight here? Okay, interesting. <laughs> but these are very high catch counts, I would say. I mean, I meme a lot about catch count, but 35 and 36 seem pretty high uh, for yeah. this for this stage. So they should be good later on. Definitely should be fine. I do feel like JTLs will feel safer with a Ghastly, considering that he has a minus speed EV uh, to get away from the Snorlax later. Let's hope the Ghastly doesn't fly past the cutscene trigger. Oh yeah, that's pretty annoying. Okay, it happens. changed direction, uh, but it was okay, heading. We're, good, we're, good. we're very close. Okay, Diego doing uh, sacrifice strats, I guess. Yeah, that's another thing that you can do on J and J. You can withdraw a very weak Pokemon to tank and attack here like that, and then it's just gonna faint. And because yeah, you'll uh, see you how much. It actually didn't do that much, but um, yeah, Pika takes a lot of damage from yeah, for sure. From these. Oh, look! Uh, Tucker's EP was not able to take out the Haunter in one shot. That's it's always annoying when that bad. happens. Minus special attack. Yeah. Oh, Tucker's minus special, okay. I'm surprised he went for glitzy glow strats on J and J then. Luckily the free heal is very convenient to get rid of all of that. Yeah. Meanwhile, on Jay Tattle screen, there's some story pro stuff going on. Something about a Q-Bone, I'm not really sure what's happening. Yeah. Imagine following the, the story. The legend of the Tower Q-Bone. Yeah. One I of mean, the few skippable cutscenes. I mean, our rival could have just, like, found a Q-Bone in, in Tower itself or in Rock Tunnel, like... I mean, imagine if you could just, like, trade rival a Q-Bone, and, like, or here, uh, here, it's, uh... Yeah, Trace did go through a lot of trouble to find a Q-Bone that actually doesn't help much later. I would, I would argue it's, it's worse than not help, like... <laughs> that is true. Every other Pokémon that he has at that point helps. Okay, so this is the second J and J fight. On this one, you don't really use Rhyhorn ever. You just do the normal Glitz equal strat. Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult. It's even it's even harder to get the the one shot here on the Arbok. Like, like I'm I'm just I'm just imagining here. Archer two, rival starts with Pidgeot. Or Pidgeot at that point, I'm not sure. It will get targeted by the electrodes. Yeah. A lot of the double fights in in these games, the partner actually, a lot of the times has a decent enough team, but they're just not using the, the correct Pokemon. Looks so JT. Like JT? Pikachu fainted, I'm sorry, it looks like Pikachu fainted for Diego, had to revive it mid-fight to bring him back for the Asher fight. Yeah. That seems to be back on track now. So JT's Rhyhorn did die, and he only has one revive, but he doesn't need to revive the, the Rhyhorn here anymore because he's not going to use it in a fight, and you don't need the, the right to be alive to use it, out on the overworld that is. I 
something about what pulling on dead horses, but not in this game. Ryan also dies for Tucker. Yeah. This basically is the fight where it's very likely to die. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what your approach is. I usually like to heal the Rhyhorn myself uh, on the second turn to avoid, to, to, pre Ooh. to try and prevent it from dying. How many, how many X special attacks does Tucker have left? Looks I like he check. only has three now, which is not enough for the upcoming part of the run. So Ted, Blaine, and E4, Geo. exactly, yeah. Ted, Blaine, uh... And Geo. The sh it should be fine as long as you have a decent, you know, Starmie. You, you, and yeah, you can skip them on blue, or... You, can... you, have to, you have to skip the one on blue, yeah. Uh, or, or... Usually you need to act special Starmie to uh, scald the... Scald one-shot the Charizard. But you can I, 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 either just get a Starmie with very high special attack that just gets that one shot without the X special attack, or you Hydro Pump it. Yeah. I, I, I personally just Scald and Drill Pack, because your Dodrio is almost s certainly like likely to outspeed it, if you have a Dodrio, of course. But... Well, I've had that before, where my Dodrio then got outsped by the Charizard, and that destroys the entire fight, so do, do that at your own risk. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, Gavin is correct. There is uh, an extra one that you can pick up in Silph Lobby. Okay. I don't know if you can pick it before. Oh, well, you don't need it to. Pick, you don't need to pick it up before Blue. Yeah, you just need it for Giovanni then. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can also pump Giovanni if you want. <laughs> yeah, just pump the entire fight. <laughs> It's certain that the end of the world for Tucker is just yeah. inconvenient to have gotten sort of on, on X special attacks. Anyway, Jay tell us about to hit Route 17 here. First part of the last major catching section of the run. Gonna do the third and easiest trainer skip here, taking things off. Just tugging this fence. And then let's see what we get. Uh, ideally looking for Ponyta and Dodo. Those are the two basically must-haves on this route. And then if you don't have them yet, you can get Psyduck, you can get Pidgey. You can, you, you can even get Rattata if you still don't have it at this point. I think so far that back to his interest. It feels like my kind of Route 17. <laughs> We just go all the way down and only in the last Dodrio. catch of breath will something pop up. The is that's, not what you uh, want to see. That's rough. There's a pony. Okay, there's a pony. There's a pony in the back. JT didn't see oh, it apparently. Oh, didn't see it? I think he didn't see it. There's an Eevee as well. I see you spawn. You could yeah, that's... Okay, I it. think. The oh, yeah. Does it despawn? Wow. Okay, that's the Okay, there's another one. <laughs> a bit of a wonky rat 17. <laughs> Yeah, but with JT's catch counts, he could leave even like without Dodrio and well, he has Psyduck marked at the moment, but so it gets the gets a couple of evos there. So it should be more or less set. If... Right, Tucker gets one immediately. Perfect. There's only Dodrios that are spawning, that's so <laughs> cursed for Jade Hattles. <laughs> okay, I think he's gonna have to leave without the Dodrio. You could go for the... Yeah, no, no chance. Though, but... he's, actually, he's actually gonna repel the for it. I'm not sure. Very awkward. Just gonna evolve the pony here. Uh... JT is winning. But also, he's not actually racing, so.
It's very awkward not seeing. Tucker will at definitely point, need At some point, you just pony. have to move on. Okay, at that yeah, point, has come on. right there. Tucker definitely gonna needs have... Doduo. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of surprised JT doesn't go for the Pidgeotto there. I mean, maybe seeing mine yesterday and was like, nope. But... <laughs> Pidgeotto is a little cursed. It doesn't have Pidgeotto yet, so you could go for it for sure. Uh, if you need the catches, I mean, looking at his plan count, yeah, he's probably gonna have to go for the tentacle and the tentacle area. Yeah. yeah, which is very surprising considering his catch count after tower. But yeah, with that seventeen, only mm. getting pony. I feel like coughing is always fine to go for. It's a little annoying that it moves around, but uh, the tentacle is the one that you want to avoid usually. Yeah, and also now he's gonna have to fire blast the. Uh, Executor I'm blue. Unless he wants to go for a Magmar. Yeah. Okay, there's a Doduo for Tucker. And another Eevee. Eevee. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to see a lot of rare spawns today. Kangaskhan, Red Charmander, Chansey, The Fable, multiple Eevees. Alright, is gonna move on to Route 21 now. In the Super Door. Any victory bills? <laughs> <laughs> Not Mark. No. Not Mark? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine plan. having that in your plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna repel Lore for that victory path. <laughs> Satch, no one. Not even, Not a, even tangler. a tangler, yeah. That's actually pretty sad. Oh, that's a star. That's a star, it's pretty high up, but you, you usually, if you see a star, no matter how far it is, usually you go for it. Yeah, you go for it. 1078. That's, that's decent. That'd be above average. The CP is no indication, it's not like, it could still be a bad star, but it's a decent enough indication of what it could be. Yeah. But we'll find out in a sec. Like, a low CP is basically always a bad start. Exactly, but... A medium not CP could still be a bad start. Yeah. Uh, not all medium CP stars are created equal. There's uh, some 1078 stars out there that will have just the most cracked special attack. And then there's another one where it has the most cracked physical attack, but that's not gonna do you any favors. <laughs> oh, Jaeger going for Tower Keybone. The rare, useful Tower Keybone. You love Ultimal to see it. <laughs> Tower Keybone. Yeah. Finally switching to Double Great Ball. Tower Keybone is also pretty good because it only evolves in one level. As opposed to the normal Cubone that needs four. Yeah, and that's the tentacle for J Tablets. Tentacle is bad. Yeah. Goes for the silver rest, he's just gonna have to wait for the tentacle to attack. Or okay, just get a yeah, that's actually pretty good. Should get it. Yeah, it's quite rare that the tentacle. It just can break out moving. like this. I have had a breakout like this, but it's very unlikely. I think it was basically the main reason why you want to pick up the server Razas if you have to go for it, because even with the Ultra Ball and the regular Raz, it's still pretty likely to break out. Yeah. Now Diego starting the Tower Jesse and James fight. So Tower Jesse and James is actually one of the worst fights in the game for Pika. You'll see it in a sec, it's just... It's basically yeah. like hideout, but it's even worse. <laughs> it's actually kind of scary. Yeah, with this one you, you can't rely on the Rhyhorn. 
you have to go for Thunderbolt and everything, so you really hope that the two has decent special attack uh, or has hit level 30 to compensate for worse special attack. Um, As you can see, you, oh, you really, nice power yeah, blow. Okay. That's, that's very what? important what? here. Fury? Sorry, Path of Legends. Oh, okay. Uh, what are you saying? All right. Uh, there's a nice strat that makes this fight a little more bearable, where you go into this with the the Growlithe and just kind of sacrifice that, uh, which has the added benefit of then the Growlithe being fainted, uh, so you can use it as a ride uh, for this next section after the tower. But if you go into the fight with Nidder King, you really have to just hope that. JJ, don't hard focus the Pikachu and just take it out. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if the. Oh, instant star for Tucker. I I'm not sure if the Growlithe threats in the beginner notes. 1042. Probably isn't. 1042 star for Tucker is a little below average again, but should be serviceable hopefully. That's a joyful moment. Ooh, okay. That's the great here. Uh, There's a Ditto on screen. <laughs> yeah. Just that's actually really that. rare on the top floor. Okay, I'm about to do the star menu here, so that's... Is that a 1% on, on that floor, I think? Ditto, yeah. There's 1% except on the bottom floor. Yeah. Let's look at the stats for JT star you. Okay, that's, that's great special attack. Yeah. Uh, this is a very good start. I think Decent you're speed here. tight on the... Uh, the Rapidash. And I see... Yeah, you just use the seat. It goes to 46 and then you're fine. Yeah, and then you're fine. Yeah. Very good start for sure. It's not, not amazing, but we'll take those. Uh, it's, it is really good, honestly, to be honest. Like, it outspeeds basically anything you want to outspeed. And the special attack seems decent enough to... ...take care of most things. Missed the precise step there, but... This would really be a good start for JT, and looks like Tucker's gonna wait with the menu. So right before Ted, right here. Uh, should get the, the Psyduck into his party. Unless he doesn't need that to evolve. <laughs> Let me check the tracker. Uh, nope, doesn't need it. Okay, well then, that's fine. That's much attack for the star. Apparently, I didn't uh, catch those stats for Tucker. Yeah, I didn't check either. But it looks like Tucker is also doing just 2 plus 2 candies. So Tucker's gonna Which be left 45 heading into Blaine. Ooh, 76. If you see a 7 at special attack, that's that, that, that's yeah. bad. You never want yeah, to see that. And 76 is the minimum. It I'm wondering be. if... I'm wondering if that's going to be a range on the Nine Tails. It is. 108. Yeah. 108 at 45. Oh, that's that's not great. So that's, I think, too wavy. Yeah. Going for the little movement block there. Yeah, and doesn't even outspeed. Yeah. I I would have used the dirt can be here. Yeah, I think probably would have done it too. He's gonna have a bit of a riskier time on playing now because of that. It'll be fine. Yeah, and this is the menu where your items are switched, so 
how, the order in which we buy things and use things and pick up things like we we really optimize it for using x items so for ev in like a very large part of the game it's like you press up to get to a special attack and you press left for x attack and this is backwards. the part where, where, yeah. where it changes yeah it's also the reason why a lot of the items we we try and buy two of them at least so that if we use one we don't miss we don't lose the space in the in the box and we don't yeah, lose so you buy, like, god menu. two awa two awakenings so yeah yeah oh we're catching Eevee? okay let's go diego let's freaking go go for all the spicy catches Ooh. oh no ah uh. Eevee is not a good catch um Okay, usually, go for double ultra. Yeah, usually we do double ultras and raz, and it's still also raz it, also raz it. Okay, yeah. this is still not guaranteed. No, probably have to even go for the silver raz if you want to tap. Mm. Oh no! It's okay. It's it'll get in. It'll gem. get in. Dude, uh -oh. it's run running away. away. Okay, goes for a great again. Eevee's a rough catch. Set. It's gonna run away. Oh, it just gave okay. up. Okay. That makes sense as well, I guess. Uh, yeah, Eevee is pretty rough. It is slightly better, I guess, to do it on Pika because it's two catches that you're getting out of it. Because you can Firestone it to get Flareon later. Uh, as with Eevee, since you already have Eevee, you're only getting Flareon. But it is pretty rough. Alright, Jet Adults now on the plane fight while Tucker is starting the quest. So these two are still very close to one another. Get your other quiz times in chat. Okay. okay. Perfect. Gets the fan throw opening, doesn't even have to heal confusion. Very nice. Yeah, you can get confused on turn one, which means you have to heal it right after that. And you can also get burned by flamethrower. If you do, you keep going. Um, because it won't do anything to you because you're using special moves anyway. Um, but it is slow, of course. And you need to heal it after the fight. But in this case, we're getting a good fight. You can get outsped by the Rapidash and the Ninetales, depending on your speed. Uh, JT is going to be fine here. And Tucker will also have a range on this Ninetales because uh, this army is very bad special attack and it's also 45. So this could go very wrong, hopefully not. Also gets the flamethrower opening. Okay, okay it doesn't is, get uh, burned, that's yeah. important. This is good. Since he's gonna... was it speed tie the Rapidash? If he also gets burned and the Rapidash crits with flare blitz that can get really dicey. Even uh, non crit hits with flare blitz can burst. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not burned then a regular with flare blitz shouldn't be dangerous. Yeah, it does get hit here. Oh, it does get burned. It gets burned by the flare blitz, okay. This is... Okay. This should be uh, fine. Uh, oh, actually, I think no, that's this, fire, this... I think that's fire blast range. Your quick attack. Quick attack range for Nantes, yeah. Well, I think that's... Yeah, but I don't think quick good. attack kills there, does it? Oh! What? Yeah, yeah. fire blast. It, it survived. It survived the range, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Looking for quick attack. Yeah, probably smart idea here. But Ninetales also has quick attack, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, probably just gonna sack the rat here. Okay, no. That actually would have been fine to quick attack. That would have been really funny if, <laughs> if we had the rat killing. <laughs> Probably just didn't want to miss out on the, yeah, on the yeah. nice experience with the star, but it's not going to have to also revive the rat if he wants to get that evo. Yeah, yeah I mean, it would have had to revive the star anyway. Yeah, uh, that's so neat. 
the Radicate Eva, so. So it did go a little off the tracks, but it's fine for the most part. It lost a little bit of time, but could have been yeah, worse, this is, I guess. Yeah, this is the only bits where that's like... The, the speed could have gone wrong like that. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, it could still be a speed tie with the Pidgeot as well later. I, yeah. I think I think he's is high enough. Okay, we're, he's, we're gonna see. He was 116, I believe. If you outspeed the Ninetales, yeah. I believe you always outspeed the... I believe that uh, is Pidgeot usually the case, yeah. No Pidgeot. Getting outsped by the Pidgeot is really unlikely. You need to be like close to mid IV. And basically get no EVs, I think. So. But yeah, done with Blaine. Um, Blaine is supposed to be the seventh gym leader. We're doing it third for some reason. It's because it's, it's just better for routing. Um, you're allowed to basically do the gyms in any order after Misty. Um, so it just works out that this is the best way to to do them in. Uh, and now we're, we have a very strong Starmie and we're just going to start sweeping a couple of gyms. So so wouldn't that be an idea? I mean, we've, we've been talking about like, oh, let's like somewhat randomize which Pokemons we are going to catch in a run. How about we randomize what order gyms we do after Misty? I feel that would be quite unfair for some people. <laughs> well, but, you all you run know. the same, the same, the same ones. Okay, like, that's fair. Th third pick Koga, anyone? <laughs> I just want to mention something. I am very proud of us for not doing a bit about the cans this time. What, what I'm sorry to all you bingo enjoyers. You fight all the trainers in the gym, they give you advice, and like the first can is next. Do they to actually? The red can. Yes, that's how that's supposed to work. <laughs> and and something else, and the second can is next to the first can, but not next to a blue can. Oh. So it's like if you fight the trainers, they give the hints, and then you always get to the same. So it's actually not that bad of a puzzle, to be honest. No. I mean, it is in the way that you can just try them all, <laughs> but, yeah. So Diego catching a tentacle here. I don't know if Diego has star yet. Doesn't look Didn't like it. Didn't have star yet, no. Just got onto the route and caught the tentacle. Oh, this is a weird part of the route. You do want to be careful on the water because the spinners here have pretty long vision. Sometimes they can <laughs> find you from outside the screen. And you don't really want to run into any spinners here also because you don't really have anything to fight them with, because um, we don't have a main right now. We got rid of Eevee, or Pika in this case. Um, yeah, for, for me on this route, I follow the path that I know, and yeah. if I have to like deviate to catch something, I'm doing it very carefully and immediately go back to the path. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not messing around with those spinners. Yeah, R21 is very, very dangerous, so... That's probably a good idea. Don't stray from the path. Anyway, while Diego is looking for that star, J Tattles and Tucker are gonna. Oh, Jeez. and there's the spinner. Well. Oh no. I feel is like Diego is, is getting closer and closer to that DNF. Is this commentator's curse? 
Maybe. I mean, we, we, we talked about it. And... I mean, we did have this ex this similar situation happen on round one, race eight last year. <laughs> the exact same race. With uh, with JT. And I believe it was also the second seed. Uh, no, it was Spider. So it must be a round one, race eight thing. I think Spider was also C2 at the time. I guess technically Diego is C3 because there is no C1, but you know. Interesting strat here, going for X attack poison jab with a tentacle. I, I like it. I like it, yeah. Yeah. It's your fault, Spider. Is it gonna be enough to get to the seed though? Because that thing has very Oh, close. okay, poison. No. Well, the poison is that huge, helps. but now the question is do you heal against the dragon pole? At this point, I think a better idea would be to just 2C as well. I yeah. don't know if Diego knows oh. you can 2C but the water. Okay, it's fine. Oh wait, you, you can't. It. Can you? Can you 2C in the water? I don't think you can. Yeah, you can't 2C in the water. Yeah, that's true. That's why. Also, that's also why Spider took so long to, to get rid of the fight. Uh, and there's last a star. Year. Okay. There's a star, okay. He's rewarded. Hopefully it's a good one. Honestly, not that bad. That didn't took that didn't take nearly as long as spiders, yeah. Genius genius strat with the poison jab. To be thing. fair, it's not the same spinner, I think. But yeah. <laughs> Very nice like on the fly uh decision making. Meanwhile, Jay Tuttles made it to blue. <laughs> Still no Dojo, so is gonna have to fire blast that. Fingers crossed. Yeah, back 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 in the olden days of this category where a second controller was not allowed. This was perhaps the hardest fight in the game. Because of this executor and then the follow-up. Charizard, it's just very difficult to find something that has a good answer to both of them. Okay, hits the okay, fire blast. But with the second controller, it was a lot easier. Oh, JT had decent special attacks, so... Okay, still gonna go for the X special. So probably not good enough to just guarantee this call. That would have been close. It wasn't guaranteed. It was a uh, decent enough range. But, yeah. This is definitely good special attack for the star though. 125. Tucker will have a problem because Tucker doesn't have <laughs> a good star and he has to do idol pump, I guess. Yeah, he's gonna have to. Yeah. Apparently, Diego star is cracked. I didn't look at the stats at all. I'm gonna yeah, look neither. at the special attack uh, <laughs> during Skull. Okay. 117, that's that's very good. 129 speed at pump, okay, that's... 129 speed is nuts. That's insane, that already outspeeds the Pidgeot. Yeah, obviously that really does not give you anything. Like, once you outspeed Pidgeot, there's really nowhere to go. Yeah, on Eevee you can maybe outspeed uh, Raichu, but in this case, yeah, Diego's this playing Pika, so... You'd, you'd much rather have that... All of those speed points going to special attack. So, so good star. Like, the special attack was good. I think you can outspeed Agatha as well. If you have insanely cracked speed. That's, yeah, you can outspeed the. I've Arbok, never seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's still it's max speed, probably with a speed IV. Yeah, that's how it gets saying. Yeah, definitely up there. Yes. So either 31 IV in speed and 1 AV, or 
like two AVs or something, but yeah. yeah. This might be the rare star that will outspeed like the weird things that you never outspeed. So Tucker is about to go for a pump here. Or should I I mean I'm guessing going for a pump. Okay, going for skull. And just okay, trying it out with real pack, okay. Okay, and and the, it does avoid. Speed, so okay, there we that's go. Good. The downside of this, if you like, if you don't outspeed, you have to use an extra menu to heal the full for Archer if Starmie gets uh, damaged here. So yeah, uh, that's why this is risky. But meanwhile, we completely missed Archer on JT's side for turn apparently. Okay. Yeah, got through it. If if we ignore it, it's all often like a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It means it can't have gone off the rails, so that's good. Good for JT. Yeah, it means we haven't seen Raichu yet or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ride. Just the entire team on the rabbit side. JT looks like probably on 306, 307 pace, I'm thinking. Yeah, really solid. Uh, so the reason this fight is bad is, as you can see on Tucker's screen, just takes forever for every turn to compute. Okay. okay T bolt one. Gonna protect. Uh, my personal second favorite. Wait, hold team. on. Did it? Did it not one shot the the muck? It was it Mio nope. just bone boomerang finish off the muck? Yeah, it did. <laughs> look, I've look, never we're seen that. Attention, we're paying attention to Archer two. Things are going wrong. I didn't know. I did not know that was that could be a range. Okay, I'm gonna call it now. Oh my it's... god, got a crit thunderbolt. Okay, this is going uh, off the rails. That's, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna call it now. If Tucker isn't doing plus six for champ. This star is gonna miss the range on Marowak. I mean, you could so just close. skull that. Yeah. If you think of it. Oh my god, that's a last super potion. Uh. This is a bad spot. No. Take... no. Okay. Um. And using full card energy. Okay. So, you know how we were talking about seeing Raichu. I think I think Raichu is coming up. Very soon. Yeah, Q1 is bad too. It might be an auto battle. Uh... I did not know that thing was a range. That's crazy. Probably not a range if you do 3 plus 1, I guess. No. Probably only a range at 2 plus 2. That's crazy. Finally, it booms. Electro was still on the field this entire time. This is such a bad attitude. To be fair, missing the range was not really relevant towards what's happening right now, but still. That's true. I mean, the boomerang on the electrodes. Yeah, I guess it, I... Yeah, true. I guess I guess it would have hit the uh, thing. Why is Cubone still alive? The power of, uh, of legends. You're gonna die to the poison tick here. Protect, okay. Well, I think Phoenix said it in the chat earlier, this was going to be uh, Archer Decides Race, and I feel like Archer has definitely decided. The non-official race. Yeah. The indirect race. Uh, decided in okay, JL's really favor. It's good Odria won't get any extra experience. Actually, never mind, it's going to get healed here. <laughs> Oh well. Sorry, back out for the last two for the last two months here. This is. I took quick attack. One of the worst. Weezy quick attack. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst actions I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Oh, we still have the gold bat. Okay, should be fine though. What a fight! Well. It, it reminds me a bit of my uh, round one uh, Archer last year's. 
I, I think uh, Phoenix uh, Phoenix is asking if it's worse than Mocha's. I think so. Because they could have uh, saved that fight, but decided, like, we're, I'm not going to get a good time, so I'm DNFing. Couldn't PB anymore. Yeah. But this, like I said, reminds me a bit of my my round one uh, Archer 2 last set, where I got, like, the Thunderbolt paralyzed minimize Ooh. turn one. That sucks. And that's... Uh... Well, JT is that's... getting the Master Ball. You are required to get a Master Ball here. Otherwise, you will be, you will be held, held hostage here. Yeah. My, my notes say, like, very big with... Like, in purple... Pick up the Master Ball. You won't actually be using it... Uh, actually, I think Leggy could have used it yesterday. Ended up not using it. Um, you can use it if you somehow still need a poke after this, but you shouldn't. JT already has 50. And they should all have like their, their catch routes pretty much set at this point. Already 50, so this is 51. <laughs> nah, you already marked the two. Gift Pokemon that you're getting free for, like I actually, saving, uh... I actually don't do it uh, until I actually go get them, just in case I forget. Because I have forgotten Same. getting Lapras before or Porygon. Diego is just finishing up lane here while Tucker is on J and J4. The easiest J and J fight. Unfortunate that he got hit, that Starmie got hit by Thunderbolt there, considering that Tucker is out of supers. Uh, it's going to go into this Giovanni fight with some damage, but that really shouldn't matter. What does matter is that he's gonna have to do an extra heal menu now before Sabrina. Yeah, what if it's... I mean, what, it can re-roll crit a, a slash and then roll a slash? Yeah. I'm not sure if that's even enough. That shouldn't be enough, I don't think. Uh... I think Starmie's still pretty, pretty overleveled for this fight. And I mean, we know Turker yeah. doesn't have any special attack or, or or speed, so those CPs have to come somewhere, so it looks like defense. Yeah, 81 is a little low for Sabrina. So I don't think Tucker can just go into the fight at that HP. Uh, the good thing is we are like, as we saw on JT's side, we are shopping after this, so... Yeah, he'll be able to pick up uh, some more potions, but... Again, does have to go for that extra menu. Meanwhile, Jay Tuttle's in Sabrina's gym. Going through the teleporters. And Diego entering Surge's gym. You want to try and hit the teleporters at the correct angle to minimize like feet shuffling. JT is doing it correctly here. Uh, and Tucker as well. Yeah, Tucker as well. Oh, oh no! no! Timing is off. Yeah, so the, the spinners, I, I don't think we've mentioned it so far, but spinners uh, and let's go are on a cycle. So they're not random like in other, or pseudo random like in other Pokemon games. So usually when you go into Sabrina's gym, uh, you know the cycle that the spinners are on, and if you hit all of the teleports oh, no. correctly. They should okay, always this behave is correct. the same. I agree with this. But getting put to slip. 
this victory road all over again. Uh, Where are those awakenings? Did JT buy full heals? Now the, the Raffinations <laughs> that's, like, that's actually <laughs> amusing. <laughs> that's okay, you can use... You can just X special here, and it kills. Okay, uh, I guess that yeah, works. You, you, you could already X special, yeah. Oh, already X special, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in that case. Yeah. Why? I don't think he needed to... Wait, Greg Kredesh up there? Um, yeah, you never know, maybe... I mean, the next time you use it is on Giovanni, or like... You could use it on Caden somehow. Stomp through oh, the Oh yes, your stomp... Uh... <laughs> Maybe is just JT is planning for that. I, I don't... That, that's not how Caden fights go, right? Why did I wait for Gio? Okay. okay. Yeah. You, you just... Ex special attack there. This does bring Tucker a little bit closer, but it's still a significant lead, I would say, for JT. Yeah, look like so. But another mess up and... Two minute lead. Yeah. Maybe a bit more. That is a pretty bulky star, the looks of it. Taking barely any damage from Psychic, which is weird. It's definitely nice to see high special defense, uh, nice for both the lands and the champs that up later. Yeah. Even though it won't save oh. you from a crit. Did Diego do Erica first? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because you just he... go from search to Celadon? I think so. That's not good. Wait, did he go up? Or... No, he flew from... Flew to Celadon and then Celadon. went directly to... Okay. Uh... You can't skip that gem, you need the badge. Yeah. Also, this would throw off the experience curve a little bit. Like, you're not gonna hit that 47 from the Charizard. Like you usually would. If you don't have Eric experience. I don't think being level 46 for Archer makes the biggest difference. Uh, I mean, we did the <laughs> Tucker yeah, missing I know, a range I know, I know. there. <laughs> But Diego Star is much better. Yeah, Diego Star is and much better. And Star, so it, sh it should be fine. <laughs> Especially because you also then hit level 47 probably from the muck. Uh... Okay, Tucker's now also on Sabrina. While Tuttles, Tuttles, J Tuttles is doing <laughs> the post Sabrina menu right here. Bring the start at 49. Yeah, 130 at 49 is really good. Yeah. You can go for all the ranges in Kyrgyz Gem if you want to. I'm guessing Tucker forgot to mark the gifts. I hope that's what it is. I hope that's what it is, yeah. I, I went uh, scrubbing through the vault, and Diego didn't fight Erica yet, so... Okay. That is concerning. Yeah, uh, Tucker didn't mark the gifts yet, but that's so we're good. I mean, he will get yes, confused uh, going to Viridian then. Yeah. yeah. I think you should be able to do everything still. Like Sabrina, you can definitely still get in the gym. Yeah. Koga as well. And I think with 2 and 2, you don't need the EXP. I hope he doesn't realize it when he's walking up Victory, like to, before Victory Road. No, you have to do it before Geofani's gym. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that is true. The thing is, like, if, if, it, if he keeps going without realizing, he's probably not gonna hit level 48 of, of Sabrina. So at that point, he should really realize. 
because he's usually one of candy yeah, to true. 49. But he used two, so will he get 47? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, it's time we'll for Caden. It is time for Caden. Good point. Let's see what Jaytados gets here. Another one of those. It's just potentially deciding special five. attack, protect. Okay. Oh. That's oh, he's just going see. for it. Oh, actually goes for the risky turn and it pays off. Yeah. Okay. It's it's honestly a safety strat here, because if yeah. you get minimize, like and this wastes a bit of time because you have to heal now. But it was going for minimize or uh, what's the other one called? Moonblast. Moonblast right there. So yeah, good call on the shadows part here. This is the safety thing to do. Yeah, if you get toxic, you just do that. Does have to heal now out of battle. It's not very fun, the... but yeah. There we go. Yeah, Diego is an archer now. Hit 47 on the archer fight, so... Like I said, uh, he's a little behind on his experience now. Problem is, Diego is not as familiar with the game. So I am. A, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't realize um, after Sabrina that it sh that he should be leveled up. But that will potentially be run ending actually. If he then accidentally candy to forty eight, I hope he realizes. Maybe just hit a spinner yeah. that JT hits. <laughs> that would help. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, this is also 37. Oh, the secret punch. Yeah. Okay, I got to Archer. Relatively decent fight for him. Alright, Tucker about to do K then as well. K then can be very annoying because, yeah, minimize. You can get minimized into oblivion and just, just take 20 turns or something like that, which really sucks. Which is where Rapidash comes in, but yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, it can be really, really bad. So. I had double protect from from Dimok on Kaden yesterday, which I had never seen before, but it can also happen. See. Okay, Moonblast turn Moon 1 Blast is not turn very one into common. The special attack drop, okay. Yeah, special attack drop means we have to go for Psychic on the Beedrill. Yeah, that's actually pretty, that's pretty rough because he seems to have Ethered already, so uh, or Elixir already, so he's actually gonna have to count his Psychic PP very closely now. Yeah, the problem is you can't really do Scald because <laughs> the special attack is really bad. Yeah, so definitely this not, could be like... very troubling. Yeah, might have, have to, to might have that. to send a reel. Oh no, getting lost in the gym. I the... I <laughs> I can definitely feel this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. If you haven't They're done this in a while, nice especially, it's easy to get lost. Yeah, it can be quite confusing. All right. Meanwhile, JT is gonna go off to Viridian. Hopefully, actually, flash to Viridian. There we go. <laughs> I feel like everyone at some point went to to Peloton accidentally. Yeah, sometimes it just happens in the heat of the moments. JT going for the yeah. skip. Yeah. Very good. Tiny optimization by going with, by walk by approaching the the cutscene basically from the top, it avoids the rival walking down uh, a bit. Yeah, right. Rifle wants to be at like a similar level as you are when talking to you. So yeah, if you're like riding 
basically if you're riding the Rapid Dash just below there already, it, he will walk down a bit. And as in every game, rivals are moving slowly. It's not as bad as Gen 1. So. Very is pretty fast. That is true, but that that one Barry is kind of the rival whose whole deal is being fast. <laughs> yeah, it's one of his things. Very active. Can't really say that about Trace. Trace is kind of a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah. Trace is zooming off screen. <laughs> like you, you right. talk to him. You talk to him like entering SSN. You walk to the left, you go down a bit, you walk to the right. He's already there, already talked to the captain. Yeah, he can also teleport. Uh, there's two cutscenes where he walks off screen and the screen fades to black and immediately fades back in. But with the speed that Trace had, he should still be there. So he has some powers. But he's not Barry level fast. Which I guess you should expect with someone named Barry be quite fast. Name other fast berries. I was thinking of the Flash, honestly. You know, Barry Allen. That's a good one. Yeah. JT psychic in both books here. Uh, the Rhyhorn usually is a Sculpt, but with JT's special attack you can just Psychic it. And if you have the extra Psychics, of course. Because you do want to- you basically need four Psychics after Koga. Uh, I'm actually not sure- I ended up completely missing Tucker's fight. I'm not really sure what Tucker's plan here is. I don't know if he's centered. Because you do need four Psychics. Um, after Koga. So I'm guessing he's probably gonna center. It looks like JT is willing to take some risk. Okay. Okay, that's... Okay, okay pays, pays off. Pays off. Uh, JT actually has... So usually the safe strat would be to do 2C here on Samuel. And just do called an X special. JT could have done a, diff a slightly different version of that fight with Psychic plus Tomp because his special attack is good enough to do that. Um, and it saves an X item, which is also pretty good uh, in terms of friendship. I think Diego's star might be good enough to just psychic kill. Yeah, I didn't check the, the special attack. I don't remember what the special attack was, but... No, no, the psychic is... Uh, you need, the, like... the special attack was okay. It was the speed that was... Yeah, the speed was cracked. I don't high. think the special attack was that... You, you need, like, absolutely cracked special attack to get that one one shot on with psychic, I think. Or to have that guaranteed, I guess. Okay, well, Jay Tellus is going for the safe. Uh, Giovanni's right here, where you go in with two controllers and just uh, sacrifice the Rapid Ash to get a free turn of setup. Yeah. JT did mention that he wanted Rapidash away Here, for Diego Geo. Diego is confused. His, his shop isn't working. He can't buy max, max repels. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is where he finds out that he didn't beat Erika. I actually thought about this earlier, but I wasn't sure if you needed to beat ex explicitly Erika. It's a number of gyms. Yeah. Yeah, but he already beat Plane. Yeah, but it's the number of gyms. Is it not four gyms? It is more, I guess, then? I think max repel is... Five? Okay. Six? Or six. Well, six shouldn't be because you only have. Oh, yeah, five. Oh, it must be five. Yeah, it's yeah. five gems, okay. I thought there was only a threshold for like four. Because I know in a lot of other categories, like we go for four to get, I don't know, ultras or something like that. Did not realize you get extra stuff with five. But I mean, it's good that it realizes it now, I guess. Now we can fix it. Okay, Tucker doing the safe version of Samuel. Can't blame him after that. Yeah. <laughs> Watcher. Not wanting to take any more risks. Here. I don't know if it might be a range as well, actually, I'm thinking. 
I think Hydro yeah. Pump could be a range. Yeah, here. I don't would think be a range for the star. Your skills. Yeah. What is that? Two PP on Psychic? Whoops. Uh, I did not check. Two. With two, we can do. That's one too few, I think. Yeah. In worst case scenario. Need one for Venusaur. I guess you can always scald the. No, you need one for Venusaur, one for. Yeah, you need Valplume and Raichu, or, yeah, Raichu. And then you give, depends on what time Marowak comes in, I guess. I mean, uh, no, but yeah. Marowak you can always call. You can always call that, yeah. So it should be just, yeah, yeah it's just, yeah, he has, he needs one more. Uh, Which means he has, he has to center, basically. Yeah, unless he goes for like something really strange, I don't know. Pumping the yeah, pumping. Raichu or something. Yeah, pumping the Raichu, I'm thinking. I don't know if that's enough even, but... He, yeah. he only needs two. So, if he has two, that's fine. No, no, he needs three. He needs one for Vileplume, one for Raichu, and one for Venusaur. Uh, you can Scald Raichu. You can? Okay. At plus four, my notes say you can Scald Raichu. Okay. Okay, also doing safe strat for Giovanni. Yeah, Phoenix bringing up a good point in chat here. Can you always scold the right shoe, or is there potentially? A range involved and very bad for the tag. I mean, honestly, I'm not aware of. I wasn't aware of this, so. Yeah, I wasn't I aware know. of that at all. Because I know that, we, like, sp I think then all the notes specifically say that you need four psychics if, after if, a Koga. If, even these notes, the etchy uh, notes, say you can sculpt. Okay. okay. Cool. So I, 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 that's what that's that's what I stole from Edgy's note. So. That's what I was saying. Okay, that's good to know. Oh, that might be why. Yeah, Jolteon. Okay. Yeah. Bigger. In that case, totally fine. Exactly the amount of psychics that Pepper needs then. Now Diego's back in Saffron, chopping. Oh, uses Psychic on Raichu, okay. That's so out of Psychics out. now. That's straight out of. Oh, okay, never mind. I am completely, okay. You're not the first one. Uh... Yeah, I was like, we were talking about the fight and I was seeing the fight and I just didn't realize it was JT, okay. <laughs> we're good. Yeah, Jay Shadow's in a much more comfortable situation. For sure, especially with this star. <laughs> I'm sorry, TT. You're fine, you have a really cracked star. JT, why are you listening to our commentating? Uh... I know, right? Can you talk to the batch checker a second time right there? Yeah. I've done that once, yeah. One other thing you want to avoid is talking to Rapidash, which GT sadly couldn't. Yeah, it's better to talk to the batch check guys than Rapidash. Yeah. I mean, Phoenix JT is racing just for a time. Yeah. And for the time, he still wants to beat Tucker. Because it just makes, like... I actually don't know what pace he's on right now. It was around, two, like, 306, I, 307 I when think, he was on I Archer. I think 307, or maybe 308. Probably more like 308 at this point, with the optional as well on Sabrina's gym. I don't know if that's gonna work with Pushy Push. Oh, it still works. Okay, that's... Yeah, you yeah, can the... take it at strange angles sometimes. 
especially to activate it the first time, the angle is... You have to be near. In the general vicinity. Yeah. To see in this fight. Yeah. You should always... Unless you're desperate, you should be to see in this. Yeah, you can you can you can save five seconds or lose two hours and forty eight minutes. <laughs> so this is where one of the fights where pump, uh, where hydro pump comes in, as well, in addition to the Samuel fight oh. that we did earlier. Looks like Tucker did heal. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, right there. Uh, okay. I didn't pay attention, but apparently. In that case, we're good. Maybe... Did he, did he just elixir that late? I don't know. Oh, he's centered. I'm confused. Or... Tucker centered, okay. I was or not mom. looking at okay. his screen for that. Mom healed? Okay, I like that. Maybe Tucker also was aware of the Raichu skull. Yeah, I'm guessing a lot of people are not aware of it. It's in the beginner notes, or... It, yeah, again, it has been it has been a minute since I've run EV, and I, I'm pretty sure that you do have to psychic the Jolteon in Pika, so yeah, uh, that's probably why I was thinking it. Yeah. I mean, you have to go to Pellet anyway for the cutscene, right, Phoenix? Yeah, but since since uh, you don't have to go after Giovanni, and you had to psychic PP on the Giovanni fight, so you must just. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Did, did someone see what's happening on Diego's side? I um, think he went into Elikazam with light screen still up and tried to hydro pump and missed. Well. Okay. I've done that before. Is he fine? Are no, we still on light he, screen? Yeah. Wait, no. Oh, he no, forgot to do no Thunderbolt. Tibolt, okay. No. Gone? Okay. Uh. Well, what do you do here? You do you see? The, I think. Okay. Well, that's, that does a lot more damage than I expected it to. <laughs> you should to see. You should to see. You should to see a heal. Okay. So not aware that you can do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. It still should be fine here. Yeah, I can hear people. Uh, just hope just go, hear just go, again. just go, just go. I guess, yeah, you do at speed. So it's fine. Uh. Oh, that was dicey. Yeah, should be fine now. Jinx is just a skull. <laughs> Very dicey. We've, we've seen some fights, sir. Uh, he is level 30, 48 now. Which means he can just do the normal. Fuchsia menu. Alright. Like the typical let's go experience, but like... Tucker doing 1C? Or did he summon already? He, he did summon second point order. Okay. Might have been perspective there. I think he summoned it in the entrance. Yeah, some people do that. I do hope Diego realizes uh, or remembers to teach Thunderbolt now. Okay. So tell us makes it past the Alexis gap. Did he teach Thunderbolt? Okay, now it's going for it. There you there go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I think you were fine, you know, on Sabrina, but I'm not entirely sure that it would have been fine later on. I think it really only you really only needed for the Pidgeot after after Sabrina. Well, what about uh, um, Lorelai and? Yeah, I meant Pidgeot and... on the rival fights after Giovanni. Like you don't mm. need Thunderbolt for Koga's gym or. Uh, yeah, 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 Giovanni's yeah, gym. for sure. But he would have needed to remember at some point. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. It, it, it will just go sideways on Patriot and then it would do it. Um, okay, so JT apparently did Alexa skip. I didn't actually see it. Uh, yeah. But it's one of the trainers you can skip, the only one you're allowed to skip on this category. In Victory Road, that is, yeah. Yeah, in Victory Road. 
Because it involves getting off the mountain instead of getting on one. Exactly. <laughs> but I guess you do also get off of the mountain for mount skip setups a bunch yeah. of times, but uh, yeah, you're not on the mount while you're skipping. And that is Is that my favorite part of the run? <laughs> Pressing A 20 times to push this boulder. But sometimes the leprous appearance. <laughs> yeah, the rapid dash pops up occasionally when you're not close to a wall. So I'm looking at Diego. Uh, I'm not sure if the if, if his notes and if it's the same for. Oh, that's not like, good. How fast okay. do you have to be in 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 Pikachu to outspeed the Jolteon? Uh, you cannot speed the Jolteon. It's just not possible. Okay, because he would have outsped the Raichu easily. Yeah. yeah, but Jolteon is just so much faster. I mean, Jolteon is kind of the speedy evolution, right? All I'm hearing is that Eevee is better. Yeah, because it's harder to kill and it's an Eevee. I'm not even gonna dignify that with a response. <laughs> like we're gonna do anyway. Alexa now. Or Alexa skip, hopefully only. And not actual Alexa. So this is a skip, you have to unmount it, so you usually go in the corner here. There we go. And then... There we go. There you go. Doing it pretty you say safe. Hi. You say, hey Alexa. Also getting Colby skip. You have to be very careful talking to Caroline there, which is the trainer that we're fighting, uh, because you can accidentally talk to the other one, and you do not, you do not want to fight the other one. Nope. Just Colby. Yeah, Colby has an electrode, and uh, that's not great for Starmie. Oh, yeah, it looks like j Tiles is on a 3 way pace, by the way. Yeah. Leaving uh, Victory Road here at 255. Which could... Be enough for oh no the freeze like the freeze okay scald can <laughs> just scald yeah. twice yeah I can just scald out of it because if you already hit the hydro pump you just missed the range which oh, can okay. happen if yeah. you start a bad special attack yeah uh, that, that was to be expected yeah so honestly the freeze didn't matter outside of adding some more uh, 125 well wow. more time there this thing is gonna have. A time uh, on Dragonite. Diego needs to heal the poison. He's toxic poisoned right now and he isn't healing it. Oh no. Okay, JT doing 2C. Uh, I think a 308 could go either way uh, in terms of uh, being above don't think. or below I think the, the medium. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. There we go. I mean, oh. Diego, Diego is like forgetting, or like just doesn't have, I guess, enough experience with the game. That is messing a few things up, but it's like really solving them on the fly a lot of the times, which is pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, D Diego does have a lot of experience in other Pokemon games. Yeah. Like it, 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 the, the the game before this that he ran was yellow. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same game, right? Yeah. Sure. And he got a new PB five days ago. Oh, okay. In some sense, this is a relatively faithful remake. If you ignore all the catching. And the there easy. are still no abilities. That sort of thing, but yeah. Alright, looks like Jeff Hattles either has high enough special attack to be able to go for the squad there. Yeah. Or just set up to plus six, I'm not sure. I think that's plus six. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you scold at plus four. You're you can't you, you can you, you can't scold it, yeah. I think. You can't scold at plus four if you have if you're very high special attack. Yeah. Uh 
but yeah, J Jetta is confirming in chat that he went for plus six. Okay. Ooh, also not killing the Lickitung, but the burn takes it out. You <laughs> need to go for Psychic there if you have best special attack uh, on Tucker screen. Oh, but wow. Risks the Scald and does not get pu get punished because of the burn. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, okay, you need 139 Scalds to at least, like, have a 13 out of 16 range. Scald. Yeah. This bad special attack is really... Really bad for attack here. So many missed ranges already. Yeah, and maybe the worst range is still coming up. Also, skipping the Fur Restore, so going for a 1C strat. Okay. At least on Agatha. And if you skip Agatha, I think you skip the other two as well. Uh, not necessarily. I definitely did that in a way last year where I one seed everything through Agatha and then only two seed lands and champ. I never two see Agatha. Yeah. I don't even know the strat actually. Once the Agatha is like, I mean, Agatha is scary, but once the Agatha is relatively safe. Yeah, you can obviously get uh, punished quite hard, but a lot of things have to happen uh, yeah. to make it go completely off the rails. So, Joker goes Susie. for Leprous Threats, so. Very good. Sandy Another will be convert very happy. to Leprous Threats. Oh yeah, another race with buffer stress. Is it four for four? I think. Might be, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. The charge of life is growing. Oh well. Um. <laughs> I mean, he will need it for Dragonite, maybe. Yeah, with the special attack, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, JT saving for Agatha. That's fair. Probably also, yeah, going for 1C here, as expected. JT has been one-shot by, by Agatha here on a previous run. Okay. Because Agatha can one-shot you with a crit, potentially, depending on your like defense and whatnot. Yeah, yeah I have had some bad Agatha fights, so I switched to the two controller fights and over like the entire E4, it's not that much slower in total. So this is the standard fight, get paralyzed, then you're hoping for power of love. Okay, defense drop um, It's a little scary, because it's gonna do a lot more damage here with the crunch. Potentially puts you into... Okay. Yep, quick If it was a crit, for... it would have killed. Uh, so... At this point, you just go. And then you have to heal on the Golbat, or 2C, or whatever. Yeah. So about 1C Agatha, and things having to go really wrong? I mean... Jetta is in no danger of dying here. Yeah, it's still fine. Just got a little unlucky. Yeah. But yeah. You can get also Poison Jab from... It's rare, but you can get Poison Jab from the Arbok and get Poison, which is also... Really I think bad. he's in quick attack range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it should be. Just, yeah. just needs to heal. Or 2C and heal, or... Yeah. Or YOLO. For safety, I'll probably 2C and heal, but... Just in case, but... Yeah, I went for 2 no, attack. Like attack. We're fine. And then we can just keep going. Like normal. Oh, uh oh. Faint range? Okay. I don't know what faint range is here. What's uh, the bounty? I don't know what the. What stats, what the stats are. But I mean, Tucker's star was really bad in general. It's in range. So it could be in range depending on God, this would be, what the stat this is. This would be devastating for Tucker. But yeah, Red barely. Will know. I don't think it'll happen. It just doesn't exist. Besides, Tucker's an EV runner. And he's more likely on Pika Runners. Uh, 
Randall's really praying for it. <laughs> Randall, Randall just wants more people. <laughs> Good job, Tucker. Responding in chat. To yeah, I think I think this is not going to be arranged, to be honest. Like twenty is probably assuming like absolute worst defense or something. I don't think it's going to happen. Grim roll. We're fine. Uh, that, it doesn't exist. Really yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I think Randall is just running on like a hacked game that has faint there. I mean, it's also happened to, like, Aspect, I think. There's a few people that have had it. Yeah. Yeah. I know Truly also had it. I think Amber also had it. I mean, did they? Or did they just say that so Randall would feel better? I think there's usually a clip for everyone. <laughs> He's too, yeah. yeah. Keith isn't even strictly a Pika runner, so... Yeah. Meanwhile, they had us getting through lands. Yeah, for JT this won't be a scary fight. No, definitely good enough for her attack to not have to worry about any ranges. Let's actually check here at 53. Oh, it's easily. Yeah. Doesn't have a range for the Dragonite at all. Yeah, if you have a range for Dragonite, usually a good way to solve it is to just do 2C. Which is not that bad on Lance, to be honest. I think it, it wastes more time, I think, on Champ. Especially if Rap Dash lives. Yeah, Randall is But I, I guess in this case, yeah, Tucker is also doing just Lapras. Uh, and Diego is done with Geo. Not sure what pace Diego is on. I think his PB is like a 335, I want to say. Yeah, 335 flat. Uh, I feel like this could be PB pace. Uh, that's going to be difficult. I think. Yeah, I'm... Uh, it could be. It's close, I think. Like if things go well, it could be like a 332. I think this is definitely over 330, Phoenix. Um, but yeah. Although I guess this is assuming Diego does a similar endgame to like a top run, I guess, which is not as likely. Well, speaking of endgame, they tell us on. Champ? Champ right now. Doing 2C? Okay. Yeah, it's not gonna risk anything here. I just wanna get this yeah. run over the line. I don't know if this is quick attack range for Rapidash. I don't think it is, nope. Yeah, so Rapidash lives. Stay alive. Which is a little bit annoying, but... Yeah, it loses a bit of time, but... Yeah. You so. want to have the safety. Basically, the run is over now for J Tattles. Yeah. GG for JT. Click some things, but. Congrats on winning the race, although you already won his race. Yeah. Sadly, probably won't beat Sandy's time, which is the median time of 30905 currently. Yeah. So, might not end up getting the three points. So, again, that median time can still shift. Let's, uh. Look at Tucker's uh, lens fight. Oh yeah. Yes, utilizing the Lapras strat. Lapras Quite is epic. pretty funny because it the camera gets like really far back. Oh, 132 at 43. 
That's not what you want to see. What's the range actually? I want to. I'm curious. Uh, uh, 11 and 16. Yeah, 11 yeah. and 16. <laughs> could have been worse. It could have been for sure, but uh, yeah, this is also definitely uh, a special attack where you would have to worry about that psychic range from Marowak, by the way. So oh, yeah. uh, let's hope he skulls or, or does something else to avoid that. Cause yeah, yeah, that's... and the reason. The reason yeah. they use the Leprous is because of Ice Shards. It's a uh, Leprous isn't like a fast mon normally, but Ice Shards as a priority move will just go first there. Chip in a bit of damage. Yeah, it's a pretty cool strat. Yeah. You can also do something similar with um, Rapid Dash, where you just stomp to finish it off because Rapid Dash will outspeed the Dragon. Yeah, or Dodrio. Dodrio as my, well. My notes use Dodrio for that. I think for Dragonite, guaranteeing is like 140 or something? Yes. Yeah, 132 is, I think, Gyarados. 132 is uh, 11 out of 16. 132 is like Gyarados uh, Psychic Range, I think. Uh, that's 15. Oh, you mean for plus 4 Merak, okay. I don't know, actually, then. I think 135 is the threshold to Oko the Marowak at plus 4. Uh, I can actually check my DMs right now because I still have a DM from, from Keith from like... No, okay, I actually don't know. It doesn't include the exact stat that I had. But I'm pretty sure I had 135 special attack once and I missed it on a 15 and 16 range or something. Anyway. Jay Talbot's finished at 309.44, GG. GG's. Winning his one person race against himself. Very impressive. Was a bit close there. Takashi's just gonna finish up the champ here as well. Uh, with the 2 C strat is very safe. Even with this bad, bad, not very good star. Guess you can just now set up plus 6 if you want to, or have the lab press help you out with uh, that shard or whatever. Hmm? You used mist there. Guess it wouldn't matter too much. I guess it could just actually, yeah, it could just. Can you ice shard the the Marowak? Potentially, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could just do that. It's it's slower. It, it, there is no point in doing it. I see we are joined by JT. What's up? GG's. Oh, thank you. Thank psychic. You. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to pay close attention for a second. Okay, he gets the range. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, <laughs> back to you, JT. Congrats on winning against yourself. How do you feel about the run? Uh, I feel, <laughs> I feel okay. It was, it was kind of weird, but I, I was really nervous at the beginning, so I was just like missing excellence left and right. Uh, I just knocked like I completely missed the circle on Caterpie and then uh, got a great on Bellsprout and so I didn't make 10 for Brock and then it was just kind of just kind of throwing the game a little bit at the top and then uh, same thing in Mount Moon and then Noble Fairy really kind of messed me up but why were um, you nervous? You were right. after, after, racing yourself right. you what? why were you nervous? you were racing yourself I don't know just something about like starting a, starting a race like this kind of okay. yeah that's fair just, just makes my hands a little shaky. Um, my catch route was so weird though, like getting, like going into Mount Moon with, or going into Tunnel with no bonuses, and then getting to Celadon with four bonuses, and then, uh, and then nothing on Route 17. It was just like so much back and forth on my, on my tracker. Uh, but it was okay. I was behind leaving Tunnel, and then just kind of was bleeding time from that point on. So. Yeah, I was. What are your first thoughts on the Fury Catch? 
Uh, I can't believe it stayed in. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't have any uh, nap berries, and I can't believe it didn't stay in. I was really surprised about that. It's good, I'm telling you it's good. Don't do it. Uh, I saw you had nana berries to fight off the, the catch after, so maybe you just didn't Yeah, I got it I got it from the from the hero. <laughs> and GG yeah. Stucker in the yeah, meantime. GG Stucker. GG Stucker. 313 10 here as a finishing time. Winning his own race. Yeah. Beating someone else. Exactly, Diego in victory road right now doing the last boulder, or I guess not the last one, but the last one where you don't just have to mash a boulder <laughs> puzzle. Uh, yeah, the race between you and Tucker J. Tattles was actually pretty close for a lot of the mid game, uh, basically all the way up yeah, to the Archer, where Tucker like just got one of the worst archer fights I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, that was disgusting. <laughs> oh my god, I really thought he'd catch up to me on that uh, on that optional I hit in the in Super Ninja, but that archer was just so bad. Yeah, uh, did you did you misread the cycle? What happened there? What's this, what's this finish? Oh, well, I'm just I'm so used to uh, a different cycle, but I was hitting the I was hitting the teleporter pad so badly that. Ah, uh, okay. The cycle was off from what I was used to. Um, and so, for some reason, even though there was plenty of time for me to not run in front of him, I committed anyway. Anyway, it didn't didn't change my path and, and got put. <laughs> well, you got through it. Not the worst optional to hit for sure. Yeah, it's just the one Pokemon. Uh... Made it through that all right. Got a really good Starmie. Or pretty good, I would say. Oh, yeah, Starmie was good enough for pretty much I'll, anything I'll you take a like want. That. Yeah. Speaking of good Starmies, uh, someone who had a very bad Starmie <laughs> has joined us in the call right now. Tucker, how do you feel about the run? Um, I feel like I, I really just got shafted, but you know, next round I'll do better for sure. I that 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 archer was oh man, I did not know that could be a range. <laughs> um, one thing that I did do in this run was do two plus two candy route on Starmie. So I believe had Bob said that um both the muck and the um, the nine tails were only ranges because I was 45 instead of 46. So yes, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 46 from now on because I think yeah, it's not too bad if you have it. decent enough special. It's just with your star, we kind of yeah, we were wondering that whether it actually made sense to do it because you had such a bad star. Yeah, um, I mean, you missed you ended up missing so many of those ranges that only become an issue when the star is bad. Yeah, literally, like Jinx too. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that happens. But he made it work. Um, yeah, it, it, the floor is only so bad when you can get to see. Yeah, uh, GG to JT. Yeah, GG. Good race. We were so <laughs> close for most of it. Yeah. I, I, I started off really bad, and then um, I guess my catches are good. I had a really high catch. You did too. I did, I did a very catches were not great. And, and Turkey at a, a high level with uh, in Moon. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess it was like I was like 15 out of Nugget Room. Right? Yeah, you got the Cliff Table. Second yeah, call yeah, though, yeah. I think. And and then yeah, like uh, the and then the big Clefairy after Lure, but yeah. yeah. Probably should have like played that differently. It's fun. Um, what else happened? Oh, there there are some like motion controller moments. I, I don't know what happened. Like I I throw left and then it would throw right. <laughs> that was weird. Oh yeah, Data also had that moment where yeah. the second Lastly, right? controller like, just cool. shut off. Yeah, it happened like twice. Yeah, I it, think. Was, it was still on. Uh, it was still on, but it just wouldn't. It wasn't like taking any inputs like the lights still had like the, the two lights for play two and everything and like it was still on but just 
No, I was mashing A as hard as I could, but nothing was happening, so I had to reconnect it. So One like, thing's uh, good. The Q bone, I think. Yeah. One thing I was wondering oh, I is, yeah. uh, I think Tucker, Tucker, you used a lot of X specials, I guess, or did you buy less? Or because we were yeah, I, I accidentally bought like an extra lure, so oh okay, I was like I was like being cautious so that I could just and you got punished for it, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I had to go to I had to buy thirteen instead of fourteen, so I I like it was much, fine. Well, I I had a careful EV minus special attack, so um, I basically like. Uh, used all the X special. I even did it for like one that I really shouldn't have for like the the grunt with um the Rattata and Voltorb. If I've skipped that then yeah. it would have been just fine. But yeah, I, I I mean I just had to do like Dodrio, no X special blue. But yeah, it ended up working fine. I was on top of that. Oh and then like in Kogas, I, yeah. I used eight psychics in Kogas. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you got pretty unlucky because like, you already yeah. elixir and then you got yeah. hit by moon blast and then you were forced to do psychic also right. on Petrill. And it, it's like okay in moon blast draw, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and since I like use my revives on Blaine, I Blaine was crazy. <laughs> Blaine was crazy because I had to miss the range and be slower as well. Uh yeah. with Rapid Dash and get burned. That was crazy. Um But yeah, since I used all my revives I like had I had a uh, no two C for Viridian Rival, so I just have to center. Yeah, I did like not think about that until the end. Um, and while I was in Giovanni Gym, I like hydro pumped uh, the Arena to try to save a sidekick, so that I can, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Move. Yeah, that, that's why I did that. I like um, that. Yeah, I mean, it was just a play that I had to do. Yeah. Um, luckily I got down there this round. I really should have been fighting for one or two points, but instead, since I got down there, I was fighting for either two or three points. Now I'm probably definitely getting two points, so, I mean, that's, that's still, like, if I had been normally paired, then I would have been fighting for two, so that's how I look at it. Yeah, it's still a win in the end, with yeah. the way the Thurman works out, so... Yeah, Those you will have points. to you yeah. will have to improve for the the two points brackets uh, next uh, next round. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been doing a few runs recently, and I, I do feel like I can PP again. Um, I obviously this this race didn't really show that off. Um, I kind of checked out after a bunch. I of do remember runs. when you got your actual PB last year. Yeah, it came out of nowhere like a massive <laughs> PB. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even expect it. I, I was pretty sure I, I was like three or two pays or something after yeah. all the catches, and then I just played safe. I died to champ like three or four times up by then. So yeah, um, I feel good moving forward. And you know, if, if there was a good, if there was a time to get a really bad run, it's this race. Yeah, yeah for sure. Also. Randall, oh. why, why did you do that? <laughs> like, I really didn't like that. Just hoping for fate. Randall does like... it to everyone. Yeah, that was rude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, by the way, Tucker, um, yep. if you leave Giovanni's gym, like just before the last spinner tile, there's an item ball. That's a revive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, did we mention the skull on? Right, yeah, did you know, did you know for your your like your psychic PP? Were you worried about that as well in that section where for like the rival fight? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I was saying, um, I had two psychics after after that, and I was saving it for Bowfoom and Venusaur. So yeah, but but then I centered, and then like you know I got yeah, it doesn't that. matter. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh you, yeah, because you center, you didn't center for the psychic. You center, you center for the, the rapid. Center to get rapid dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, okay, that makes yeah. sense now. So you did know you could skull. Okay, maybe yeah. I'm the only one that didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I did some like misplays as well in like VR. I think I scolded like a tongue one with bad special. Yeah. I mean, I'll focus. The this, the oh, burn yeah. on the like a tongue was pretty funny. <laughs> you burned two kills. Yeah. I had to heal again, but 
But he would have died, I think, if it wasn't for the burn. Or no? Um, because it power webs. No, I, I was at. I was at full, I think. Okay. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's see how Diego does. Yeah, I, I think them. PB is still alive. PB should still be alive. Yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, he left uh, the crew road at three eighteen. So this could potentially be. Like a 331-332 pace, which would be a PB for Diego. It's three. I think I believe it's 335. It's the last one that I know of. I don't know if he PB since then. I, I I saw like he was comparing splits earlier today to 335. Okay. And he didn't PB. Hopefully that works out for him. He's doing standard once he uh, Agatha here gets yeah. the defense drop, but luckily already through the uh, Arbok here, so Should won't really fine. have to worry about yeah. getting hit. Were you getting worried uh, on your Agatha fight, JC? Uh, not any more than I usually am. You um, saved. Honestly, I, if I wasn't listening to y'all's commentary, I probably wouldn't have healed on uh, out of quick attack range. So thanks for uh, reminding me. Yeah, because your You're defense welcome. dropped, it was. <laughs> Did you end up I, one and, and I think uh, you died because it was 25. You were by 20, 20 HP. I had, I had 19 health, so yeah, it would have taken me out for sure. Um, I don't know. I ever ever since this one run where I got like crit killed on Arbok. Uh, I just, I'm terrified of that fight every time now. That's why I saved before it this time. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just always afraid of back of that. That's fair. fair. Yeah. Especially because there's like a million different paths on the notes that uh, that fight can take. It is pretty confusing. Is Especially if you get a path that you're not really <laughs> that familiar with. Yeah, this is like the, the closest that Let's Go Speedrunning gets to a flow chart. Yeah. Yeah. Like crunched on one, for example, is a pretty, pretty bad one to get. My 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 two C fights uh, is very clean and very easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. One C works out most times. One thing I was actually thinking about: Tucker went for the Firestone early and got nine tails. Yeah, is this something you normally do? I I thought no. Um, what happened was um, a Vulpix and an Abra spawned on Route 8. So I was like, okay, let's do this. Oh, okay, things. yeah. Um, That's yeah. fair. And then what, the, the fallout of that was um, my my catch count was just like stuck on odd. Um, so I ended <laughs> and up. And then you no longer had the Nine Tails to even it out. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I had no, I had no um, reason to do with that either. But it, it, the opportunity arose and uh, I took it. it, it I don't know. <laughs> Because you're both there. Um, yeah, and I just got assigned again because it was. This one. Yeah, this run had like not really any stalling for bonds and um, and hidden optional. So, yeah. yeah. A lot of fights I just like made use of the year, but it was good. At least I didn't do anything too bad besides get unlucky. Meanwhile, Diego's uh, running a very clean dance fight. Yeah, this is the other version uh, of Tusi with Rapidash, where at the end we Psychic and Stomp. Although, the Stomp is not going to matter here because the Starmie is cracked. Still going yeah. for T-Bolt. I guess probably running beginner notes, which just yeah. oh. mentioned T-Bolt. I already level 53 here. Uh... I think he picked up an extra candy. Okay. What extra candy, I'm wondering? <laughs> Mansion? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, running Pika. Well, there's probably a mention. About oh, I just picked up the Lapras candy. Oh, but, but he did candy the Rapidash as well, so yeah, I'm probably pick up the Mansion candy then. Yeah. On top of that. Yeah, at, at 54, 
there really shouldn't be an issue with the range on Dragonite. Yeah, it's not a range. Okay, just clicking Stomp here to do anything on Rock Dash. <laughs> yeah, this looks like it'll be a PB. Unless... Okay, I won't say it. it just no it comment. It'll be a PB. It'll be a PB. Just keep that second controller out and... I will stay EV1 today. I'm sorry, Trip. It won twice today. Yep. Oh, you know. <laughs> you could say there was no competition for the one race, you know. Uh... Eevee was always going to win at least one of these. Eevee brethren. Right time for champ. Oh, I didn't check, but I'm guessing 2C. I would hope so. At this uh, point. If, actually, if running beginner notes, I guess, I think the beginner notes mention uh, pulling out a, like a bug or something. But I don't think it did that, so it's probably just doing rapid dash. No, I'll get the repetition. Yeah. This is still safe enough. Yeah, it's. We don't set the Oh, okay, looks like uh, the beginner nuts do the race steps now since last year. Oh, okay. I I, I seem to vaguely remember that Etchi mentioned not being Yeah, I also seem to vaguely remember Etchi saying that he was going to upset. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that should makes be sense. fine here. Okay. I don't know what the range was with Psychic, but might have been good enough, actually. But T bolt will work. That's fine. Again, just following the beginner notes, you don't have to count the PP and that sort of stuff. Depends on where you are in the world, but there will be another run today. <laughs> yeah. Technically, for me, it's already today. tomorrow. <laughs> but if you're in the US, it's still today. Technically. It's, it's for, for me and Swift, it's also today. Oh no, we're yeah, okay, so. yeah, that's true, because it's already past midnight for GPM. Yep. GP me. <laughs> it's already Saturday, so. Uh, thank you for the ads, uh, Fury. I did not run them manually, sorry. <laughs> I just. Doing tech and comms is not something I'm used to, so I just. I forgot about the ads. A lot to the uh. actually. I, At least the ad should be over by the time that... To be fair, I did remember um, to run an ad to avoid um, ads during this section, but I just I completely forgot that um, Diego was like 20 minutes behind, so I needed to run another ad. Oh well. It's okay, it's almost over. Yeah, just two more Pokemon here. It looks to be like a 333. Small PB, but still a PB for Diego. Yeah, and definitely tons of like improvements still. Uh, yeah, that can be done. And and it's PB by minutes. When when do oh, we get sure. one of those? I know, right? <laughs> and also, Diego showed off a lot of very creative problem-solving skills in this run. Yeah, yeah. Very for for, so. for JT and Tucker, if you're planning to like watch it back, uh, look at how uh, Diego went on the uh, surfing route. Uh, yeah. I saw the optional, right? Yeah, the optional. It actually yeah. solved it pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to see for myself. We'll, we won't spoil it. Yeah. Okay. So, GG, Diego. Oh, I remember it. Um, you guys kept saying that I used only had one uh, revive left, but I had only used one revive. Um, so, I still Just... had two left for like the entire run. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was pretty, I was pretty safe on the revives. I mean, it didn't really matter. I guess your Rhyhorn died, but you didn't need yeah, it, it didn't. revived at that point. It never came up. I mean, your Sprout Vine was also fine uh, in the end. Especially because yeah, you had... Yeah, uh, Because, like, my Sprout, for example, revived. died yesterday, but I didn't have any other pokes, so I had to finish the setup with Eevee, which is not ideal. If you have others, it's just... Yeah, that happened to me, and... and uh, okay. And, uh... He just took me out the other day. <laughs> okay. 
All right, Diego, just barely missing the 332 here. 33301. GG's. GG's. GG. GG. Getting that sweet two minute PB. Very nice. I'm not sure if Diego will be joining us. I'll give him a minute uh, after a three and a half hour run. Yeah. He might want to take a short break. But yeah, uh, in terms of the format for now, that means that uh, the median time has moved on, I believe. Let me just check the bracket. Yes, the median time is now held by crisis, uh, meaning that j titles or I guess right between crisis and j titles because both of them have a 309.45 exactly. Well, oh, well. Well, I was going to say uh, the... Uh... My life split says 309-44-78. Okay. In that uh, case, it's a 44. The other yeah. thing says 309-45. So we got a race time on that? <laughs> yeah, because the thing is race time rounds up. Yeah, yeah so I mean, if you guys want to round up, then that's totally fine. But uh, Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess if it rounded up then. for both you and Pervis. Yeah. Or not Pervis, uh, Crisis, then. I feel like if the median time actually ends up hanging right between a tie like this uh at the end of the round then you might have to retime it but do a do a frame by frame yeah let's let's That's cross cool. that bridge when we get to that but as, as it stands right now uh j Tiles gets three points from this uh Tucker gets two diego doesn't get any points but walks away with the pb and he's joined us right now diego gg congrats on hello the uh Gee. Tell us, tell us how you feel about the run. <laughs> oh my god, uh, this run! I mean, the the second rival was something. Uh, I was uh, 11, 15, uh, 11, 14, 11, 13, I guess, and you say a rare candy, and then I had that poisoned. I was so confused. Me, not the Pokemon. Yeah. So, it was a lame start. It was a difficult start for sure. Going into Cerulean at level 13, I believe, uh, getting the candy and all of that. But you stuck with it. I mean, uh, that was a lot of. Uh, I, I don't know how to say this. Uh, it's like uh, the newbie. For me, uh, I don't know. yeah, you're still learning. You need to yeah. get some more experience. Well, honestly, we we, we kept Hasen saying it for the entirety of the run. We were very impressed with your problem-solving skills uh, because there was a lot that was happening uh, during your run. A lot of things going going bad, uh, but you always managed to fix the problems that arose. So again, huge congrats on turning that around and, and still PBing here. Thank you. I'm going to improve that PB oh, for sure. Well, yeah, you have at least two more chances in the tournament to, to show us your improvement. And uh, we're going to look forward to that. Oh, do we have any more thoughts from our runners here? I think it's... GG's. GG's. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, look back at this and try to improve. GG's. All right, all right. Then before we say goodbye for now, let's look ahead at our schedule for the rest of the weekend, because this was by far not the last race of this round. Uh, coming up later in the night uh, at 11 p.m. Eastern, we have our D-Gen hours race between Ergote, Headbub, and Razor's Edge. Probably one of the most anticipated races of the first round as well. So uh, if your schedule allows it, stay up late with our commentators, uh, Phoenix Melior and Aspect, to watch it unfold. It's surely going to be a ride. Uh, I'm probably going to be asleep, though, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. 
Anyway, uh, setting up tomorrow's races is the race of the time zones between Aspect, Kazarian, and LB starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, now, I'm personally looking forward to that one, not only because I'll be on comms again, but because Kazarian has put up some great times. Uh, didn't participate last year. Uh, and probably has a pretty good chance to give Aspect a run uh, for his money. So that'll be an exciting race for sure. And then the last race of the weekend currently is going to be Etiquette versus King Traps versus uh, Alwo, I believe. ALW0 at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Uh, anyway. Yeah, and That's for good. those yeah. wondering, uh, we used to have another race just starting just after this one, but that had to be postponed. So if you're yeah. wondering about that one, uh, we'll, we'll have that one a bit later on. Yeah. Yes, the race between Randolith's Cheese, Pokédex Addy, and Burner will happen at a later date. I'm not sure if it's been rescheduled already. Uh, yes, it's going to happen on... June 5th at 6.30 p.m. now. So a little bit later next week. Yeah. So but there's three more races besides the ones on screen. There's three more that will happen next week. So still lots exactly. of content. <laughs> and this is only round one. Yep. This is only one run, round one. There's just so many races to come for this tournament. It's going to be an exciting time. But anyway, uh, I think that's going to be it for us from us here today. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Make sure to follow this channel so you can find us again for the upcoming races. And until then, hope you have a great rest of your day.